calling the meeting to order at 6.36. Uh, uh, <clears throat> just to ask just that, to we ask keep it moving, that we keep it moving where appropriate. Where um, appropriate. We have discussion, um, that's fine. fine. We have discussion, that's fine. Let's not get oh, derailed. Let's not get derailed. Um, okay. Um, are there any okay. additions are there any or, additions adjustments, to or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, Three licenses, three licenses, a second class license, license, second class license, tobacco license, tobacco license, 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 so we also have the so we also have the thing that Randall wanted us to add the grant the other grant for the rail trail other grant for the rail trail that's also that's also our Okay, it was there. It says update on vote rec grant and possible delegation of signature authority. The grant is due twelve fifteen. The timing of our next meeting requires the court attention tonight. Randall Zott. Okay. And that's and what about the L C P C? There was an L C P C app. Yep. Uh that's under number ten, I believe, is nope, not number 10. eleven. Uh number eleven. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I was confusing the two when you know. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any other additions or modifications? Um, I don't see you, Tim, on the Zoom. Okay, so is Donna going to be able to watch this back? Because they can't hear us. Right. Do you have Ron's cell phone number, one of you? Ron's? No, I want you to text him and tell him that audio is working now. We need to do anything <coughs> with regard to, uh, I know mean we've got an executive session scheduled on the agenda, but those specific enough to deal with, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that we should deal with the, perhaps the, you know, local, I, I'm not sure the you know, contract has to be dealt with an executive, but it is a contract, so it's, it's it could be. It's an employee. I think it needs to be an employee. Executive well, you can, session. You can have contracts. You can do a contract <coughs> executive session too. You can. But I don't. I don't necessarily think we need to do that for the intellectual. I do think <coughs> we should do it for the uh, for the employment letters related to the assessor position. Yeah. That's, yeah. In, you know our. Our executive session is fairly generic. If there is no employee discussion, I'm just wondering if we need to be specific. It doesn't hurt. So we can add one. It's actually it's, uh, it's more letter. It's an offer, a revised offer of employment, is what it is. Correct. For two, two people. Okay. And then we can look up the, the statute number later. Okay, so for Donna's sake, who will be listening to this afterwards, <clears throat> we added arrow and emissions from the town assessor to our agenda, landowner permission from the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. Um, and what was the other? Uh, the other was already there. Just those two. And then also the executive session um, for a revised offer of employment um, for employees. 
Okay, invoices and orders. Anything worth calling out at the moment? from Casella. Uh, it's called Debris Management Cell Call for $2,200. Is that related to the flood? Ordered correctly? I'm not sure. 5703 is flood. I mean, 53, 53.7 is flood. Okay. All these were for skate yeah. The thousand dollars <coughs> $1,035 to Crystal Hill for animal control. Does everybody have the answers on that? They asked for the last meetings. We weren't going to pay that until maybe it was revised at the last meeting. I don't remember. Fine. This is not an addition to the last meeting. It was held from yeah, the last meeting. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. We did. Um, so all of that time happened. Did it, um, it was, was a significant amount of work for her to get the dog tested. Fifteen dollars a day for feeding, phone calls, emails, etc. Um, I think there is. It's pretty well agreed upon that that should never have happened, um, and probably and will not happen again. And, uh, Dean and I have talked. Um, quite a bit about how to make sure it doesn't happen again, but she did the work, and it's hard not to pay somebody who did the work, and so I think um, lesson learned <coughs> moving forward, uh, we just have to be better, uh, we have to be cleaner, we just have to make sure um, we're doing our, our best job as a town administrator and also as a select board to make sure um, our ACOs have what they need to move the process where it needs to go. Okay. There's another invoice from a law, I believe it's Alliance Mechanical, for $11,000 WW Boiler. Do you know what that is? Say that again. Alliance Mechanical? Yeah. That's for the, uh, it should not be a boiler, that's interesting. Uh, it's for the upstairs, uh, the heat system in the mechanical room of the municipal building. So they came and did a spring maintenance. And if you look at the, it's actually several invoices together. If you pull that invoice, there's probably six, um, six events that added up to that 600, I think $672, is that, or thereabouts? $11,414.10. 11000 What does the Alliance invoice say? 11000 because there's that and this. So we have to sign both. And when I go to the Alliance Mechanical one, it just says six hundred and forty-nine dollars. Let's hold on that. I think that's a typo. Because Where's the eleven thousand? In my mind, it was six. Eleven thousand four hundred fourteen dollars. Alliance Mechanical. So is there? There's two. Ta there's two folders. Is it in that folder? Eleven thousand. I mean, that's our heat system. We should not be paying eleven thousand. No, this folder is all uh, payroll. <laughs> and you know. So maybe like the that. A's start over at some point in this file then, because it looks yeah. like there's two but different so sets. We, we circled that, Beth, and that, that's, I had 600 and something in my mind, and that's what the invoice shows. This, this is not correct. The thing is, it's Allegiance truck. It doesn't say boiler. It says bucket truck. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a, oh, wait, okay. wait, 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 sorry. Allegiance. Wait, let me follow it all the way along. Okay, Allegiance okay. says $773. Alliance. Directly below it, it's below, okay, see, I see. Alliance Mechanical. W.W. Boiler. Hey, um, that says Village of Johnson payable. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> so you can understand why I'm confused. Wait a minute. So uh, to be f Lydia stayed very late tonight okay. until 5 o'clock. And I think we need, that's another conversation about how we make the office more efficient for staff to be able to get out on time. We don't need to talk about it right now. OK. okay. That's yeah. not ours. Good. Anything else? They may need this for tonight. Glad well, that's cleared up, though. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that was the big surprising one to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, that was a little alarming. Okay, no. Okay. Consider approving minutes for November 20th. Um, yeah. Are we going to <laughs> reapprove the motions that we made as part of that same motion or separate? I think we agreed last time that we would 
Um, Take them individually, right? No, I, didn't we talk about like just ratifying them this meeting? So yes. ratifying yeah. them, so we don't have to go through it, I don't think. Okay. I would move that we approve the minutes and then we can deal with the ratification of the articles. Yeah. We Second. You said I would I would move that. Is that what you said? I said I would okay, move okay. the minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now I would move that we reaffirm and ratify any and all actions that we took at the last meeting as indicated in the minutes of the meeting that we just approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Okay. Um, select board issues and concerns. I have one, which is that Randall and I will be attending a call with um, a group from the state and um, other philanthropic entities who are going to be asking the state of the town since the flood and where funding opportunities are. It'll be this Thursday. Um, topics that I'm thinking about are obviously, you know, grocery store and however we can get something to meet the need of both a village center entity and also food sourcing. Um, downtown housing and population impact, current state of our municipal buildings, municipally owned buildings for the town and the village. Um, I'll mention the wastewater treatment uh, facility and the library. Are there any other topics that you would deem worthy of discussion for um, philanthropic opportunity? I have a question that might be an option. So in the email that Randall sent out, the Municipal Technical Assistance Agreement with the LCPC, is that totally separate from the grant opportunity? Is, in other words, is that some of the money that the state is making available to the so-called pre to MCAP Council? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I feel like, I don't know the answer to that is, what the right, is the, my response. Um, but that being said, I feel like those MTAP towns are whatever the state has out there, like we're helping you get as, uh, access to those funds. Yeah. So, for what that's worth, I assume it does fall into that category. Yeah, so I think it is. Yeah. Um, so, if, if it in fact is, then that's great. And I wouldn't necessarily go and put it in there. This group's a little bit different because it's not just state, it's organized by the State Economic Development. It's a longer title than that uh, agency, but it's bringing in independent funders to. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I don't like think we should limit ourselves. Yeah. It's both. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I kind of would be curious to you know if they'd be interested in helping us think about flood mitigation. Um, okay. I think that, you know, I went to bed last night thinking, I think probably we've got a lot of snow in the hills. Because it's raining all night. I think I'm tired. You know. The rivers are high. The rivers are high and we're going to be fine. But. Shut up. Yeah. Gonna, it's going to flood again. So that's actually a good segue into the LCPC conversation right. at some point in time. That, that may be, you know, looking at a global. We're going to get basin, there. River basin. We have that on our agenda. We're going to get there. We, we do, but but I'm pointing at that isn't something that could be a consideration for some of the funding people. Is I got they you. support that activity? Right. Would they help us with funds? Yeah. Uh, basically, a um, Memorial River floodway 
<coughs> uh, I have more share on that too, which I will in a minute. Uh, but okay. Can yeah. I make a suggestion? Um, about maybe some organization of a public private partnership for uh, housing development and or economic development, but just accessing, uh, creating opportunities for philanthropic investment for both uh, contractors, but also investors to create housing opportunities within Monroe County or by Pacific and Johnson. But like creating that mechanism for that yeah, okay. Thomas, do you have a sense of when the new flood map is going to come out? Um, so, I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last ones were 1971. The running so, joke, right? 83. Okay. So, more, I'm going to guess 2083. Is that my guess? Just, the running joke is this year. That's the yeah, answer. That is a running joke. <laughs> That's what we heard from FEMA right away. Oh, it'll be out in September. You actually have some information, do you? Oh, no, I wanted to add something to your list if I could. Yeah, please. If I could. Um, the thought of, you know, uh, if you're going through that kind of level of uh, support, if there was anything to mention for, you know, on the recreation side, for finding some ways and funding to uh, increase in programming or support the programming, uh, supporting the our you know the the folks that we have that uh, are you know maybe having to choose to not have the kid play some sports because you know the financial burden, or maybe even planning for some kind of uh, rejuvenation of recreation you know in the town. So. We have a program that. Um, yeah, I will bring that up. I like that idea. We have a program where through REC, if somebody can't afford um, to register, that it comes to the select board and the select board can give a waiver. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah we have that the scholarship basis. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Okay. And what I thought Dean was going to mention, but I'll mention instead, is uh, maybe mention our animal control challenges. Um, you know, the entire county is dealing with it. And I think uh, I, you know, I, I have spoken to people from other towns who are interested in coming up with a solution, uh, a multi-town solution, so. So the thing is that these folks are, are, this is about flood and the impact of the flood. And I think if we could say we had a spike in issues following the flood, they would be open to hearing it, but I'm worried that I don't want to take us. Yeah. I don't want to so, divert attention. That's fair. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, any other issues or concerns? Okay. Um, plan purchases. Air air scrubber. Um, so <coughs> last week um, there was concern from the village trustees about the health of the downstairs municipal building. Um, so to help um, remediate those, I guess to help take care of those concerns, I uh, called SurfPro out. They did a little investigation. They came and like inspected. They brought the best technology they have available. And it was, um, the environment's dry. It's not producing any more mold, but there is the presence of mold spores and they said that before we start disrupting that space, we need to have a negative pressure and that um, a negative pressure system and that's created through these air scrubbers. I reached out to Ron Rajensky and he said it is reimbursable through by FEMA, um, but they suggested that we take a break on um, cleaning that space up. Uh, I was really gung-ho to get it done this week, but um, it's gonna, we have to make sure our employees are safe as well. And Wait, who is saying to give it a break and why? Um, SurfPro said if we disrupt the space, we're going to send mold spores. Uh, 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 until yeah. the air scrubbers get in. Correct. And until Which you have a negative pressure environment, then then you can clean under that negative pressure. Um, but to take a break until that time. And Eric uh, sent that one over, <laughs> and that's the same scrubber they use at the village garage and there. Um, issues there. 
So um, it can be here in a couple days um, with your approval. And so we can hopefully get started by the end of this week, if not the early next week. So just a, slow, a small delay. Um, and the goal is to be not slow down any construction, right? Is this a, a rental or a purchase? Purchase. Was theirs a rental? Wait, no, I, by the two. we're purchasing from the village? No, we're purchasing from Amazon.com. Uh -huh. um, and but it's it, it's a known machine that works and that we that's been tested by the village and so it's not like we're just guessing at which machine to use. It's, um, and so just creating a safe environment so that we keep going and that's really the goal and how we do that I think it doesn't matter but I think we do need to create that safe environment so that the employees can go down there and take care of business. So the village already has one. It's on. It's in use. They're, oh, they're oh. Still use I already tried. Trust me. I was on it. I wanted it. And, I understood uh, they put it in the garage. I just yeah. realized it was too. What's the cost? Tom? Uh, Thirteen. It's in the packet. Um, <laughs> right up. Okay. Fourteen. I think. Uh, Thirteen eighty nine. Um, hopefully, Rosemary has a tax free account. Um, Uh, and then it's, reim it's reimbursable on your Yes, at least 87.5%, um, and then the state's portion, so between 90 and 95% will be um, reimbursed. Well, I don't think we have a lot of choice in terms of protecting the employees. So I yeah. yeah, I mean, it's either we do this or we hire SurfPro to come in and do it for us, and that will be exorbitantly expensive. So um, we have a motion? I'll second. Yeah. Any discussion? Who's going to set it up? Is, it, is, it, uh, is, is there an additional cost associated with setting it up? Or? I'm, I'm not aware of one. Um, and I'm a, I was going to work with Nate and say, hey, Nate, show me how this works. And, I mean, it's his building, too. So, And the village, uh, we did this, I did speak with the village today about um, having this cost be split or at least prorated based on building use. So it's not going to fall entirely on the town. Um, but, but to fall both on both parties, or we're not sure how that's going to work out, but we're working on it. Work out. Exactly, you know, it's going to be tricky. I was thinking air monitors on the employees to see the village Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a motion. Are we ready to, ready to vote? Yep. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Let's have it. Uh, Let's make sure it needs filters. We get extra filters. Extra filters. Okay. Um, updated financials. From Rosemary, yeah. Do you have those, Tom? I don't. If I do, uh, Rosemary gave me the smaller folder that is right here. If there's updated financials, it'll be in that packet. No, that's all. Okay. Uh, I can. Um, I'll get them an email and update them. Actually, I'll put them in the spreadsheet. Yeah, I, don't know. Um, I really like that full reconciliation of budget, actual cash. The whole thing. Um, yeah, we're coming up on the six month point. We should be clear. Okay. Um, <clears throat> cash on hand. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, yeah, and balances of like um, allocated funds in current budget, even if they're not spent. Those kinds of things. Would it be beneficial for me to have, have room or move all those funds now so then we have a cleaner picture moving forward with large outstanding expenses? If there are funds to be moved, having them real time is always helpful, in my opinion. Um, okay, licenses. So we have three licenses. Every I think everyone might have seen them. Maybe Shane didn't. Um, oh, right there. Um, I forgot during plan purchases the tabulator. Okay, tabulator plan purchases. Yep. 
Um, so this year for town meeting, there's a primary and also a town meeting. Uh, Rosemary is expecting um, over 600 uh, voters, and typically it's a hand count operation. And she's asking the board to approve spending. Um, it's about $1,000 to have somebody come in and program the tabulator for this election um, to approve that purchase so that way the town side and the primary side will be tabulated. Um, instead of hand count, the school will still be hand count um, on site though. Uh, we use the tabulator whatever election it was that was going to have a big number and it was really handy. There were some numbers that were off in the tabulator and we manually went through the calculations that didn't read properly. Um, but it tells you when it doesn't read properly. And it spits them out separately. It spits them out separately and it was like nothing to count. I'm for it. I think it's a good... Well, it's, this is a presidential primary, so that's why it's going to kick the number up. Otherwise, it's not worth it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next up is. Can I ask a bell question? Yeah. So, have we seen anything? I know there's several bells from Mumbley Associates. Have you seen any actual work product from them? No. I have not. Uh, well, we you... just got the. Um, what is that? NEPA? They did a, a NEPA, form. The NEPA form recently. And then we asked them for something else back in the fall because we it was something budget like updated updating a couple of numbers. Yes. Yeah. So those are the two things that I know we've specifically asked them for in the past four months. If you don't have copies of those, you should have, it seems to me. Um, and you know, personally, if you get them, I wouldn't mind seeing them. We can see, see what, what work product we got. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah, I think asking Randall for those would be better than asking Tom, and he can send them to Tom too. Yeah, maybe, maybe Randall has them. <laughs> yeah, and if he doesn't, he should get them from Tori. But he should have them. He is the one following up on them. Uh, okay, licenses. Uh, the licenses are right there. The tobacco licenses for what are they called? New Beverage LLC. Yeah, and New Beverage LLC in East Johnson. Yeah. We need a motion to approve. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the tobacco license for New Beverage LLC. Licenses. Licenses. Sorry. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's have it. Error and emissions. Just out of curiosity, does is Justin aware of the fact that something like this needs to get on an agenda rather than just yeah. kind of stick yeah. it in the air? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good question. The last couple of times it's been very like last minute um and maybe just having him know to get tuesday to before our meeting yeah i mean it, it could be in the packet for the next meeting right it only has to happen before the 31st of december before the 31st all right december. yeah you can't do p and o's yes, after the 31st has to go to bca at that point uh -huh. so put, let's put gotcha. it on the next meeting <clears throat> or just approve it i don't care well, if we're going to talk about well, it, it, it got added to the agenda. It got this, added. We should just do it. Yeah. But yeah, he should know that we need submissions the Tuesday before our meetings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Any? This is because there was a duplicate in um, site improvements from the inactive parcels were added twice. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it at the um, They were charged twice for six sewer entrances and six water entrances. Yeah. So, do you have a motion? 
where we are we thinking about the next year. No, I, I, I say we're talking about it. It's moving. So are you moving? Yes, I'm here. Put me down as moving. Okay, you're moving to approve, I assume. Yes. Okay. South Carolina. <laughs> Is there a second? Just second. Stop encouraging him, Duncan. That's the second time you've laughed at him. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Are we signing your copy? Tom's copy. Um, sign my copy. It's fine. Okay. Okay, next up is um, buyout properties who've permitted open discussion. Uh, sorry, I don't have this in front of me, but I emailed it to you. Do you have it, Tom? I um, actually did not know what happened. Was there a okay. in the packet? Form that I needed to sign for this. It was in the other one. It was in the other one. Okay, properties who Sorry, have given permission for buyout. Jay Ballasier, I'll try not to like totally do injustice to names, but no promises. Jay Ballasier, Ballasier who is at 209 River Road West. Um, their house had complete flooding. Um, through the first floor, their assessed property value at the time of the flood was one hundred and fifty nine thousand seven hundred. Um, they had forty one inches of standing water in the living part of their house. Their basement was fully submerged. Um, so that is the first person and uh, I sent this on. November 9th, by the way, if you need to reference when I sent it. The next property listed is Pine Hill Properties. Um, <clears throat> developed property has a building on um, or other permanent structure on it. Um, they are looking at very specifically 35 Railroad Street. So they had 21 and 29 listed initially, but they're only seeking 35 Railroad Street, which I think is the Red House. Yes. Um, their assessed value for the three properties is $1.36 <coughs> uh, but that's not what they're seeking. It's just for that one house. <coughs> and they say they've, re they've received extensive flood damage and have learned that they have flooded in the past. And they've been emailing <coughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, Um, okay. The next um, property owner is Jerry Williams um, at 32 Library Street. Um, the 2017 real estate appraised value was $225,000. They said their house would make a lovely new parking lot for the library. Uh, it's very sad and kind and funny little. Um, next property is Bert Burleson uh, at 395 Main West. Um, estimated assessed value, sorry, at time of flood was 128000 Cost of the home is too much for them to cover. Um, I think that they might be that um, trailer behind yeah, the house. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last public um, available discussion entity is Howard Romero is the listed name. Um, fill up property at 990 Vermont Route 100C. Um, assessed value is 259700 from a recent tax bill. Uh, the assessed value is com uh, computed from commingled properties. This figure is what is listed as homestead within the river corridor. No. 
Um, so those are the those are the properties we have permission from, which is about half of them. A little more than half of them. Is there actually any action that we have to take tonight, or is it just? Um, there is no action we need to take tonight, but we do need to figure out if, okay, I've been thinking about this a lot. I have a couple of thoughts. One is that I don't think we know, and I don't think we will know until January, based on our conversation with the state, what the funding is going to look like from the state. I know they keep saying it's very promising and they expect that they'll be able to cover, but then they also follow it immediately with, but we don't have this approved. So... <clears throat> Um, there is that, but I think that from our st our standpoint, I think we really need to make sure that we know what our guidelines are going to be for what we want to accept from a state per I mean from a town perspective, so that we're clear, we're unbiased as much as possible, and we're doing the right thing for the town, and also for the property owner for the property. But, but for the town, we need to protect the town. Um, so how are we going to, when we do get this full list of properties, I would like for us to be able to act pretty quickly if we're going to do something because I don't think it's fair that people who have lost everything are in limbo for an extended period of time, particularly if they don't have a place, a permanent place to live. Uh, and there are people on the list who I know don't have a permanent place to live. Um, so it's going to take two years to right so finalize it anyway. Well, we can slow it down, or we can help grease the wheels. No, no, no. And I would like to help yeah. grease the wheels. No, I, I, I take your point. I'm just so you're um, thinking we should it. dedicate some time to um, creating some standards that work for us, work for the homeowners. So that it is not biased in any way. Yeah, we're still gonna have to talk through each property, I'm sure, but I think that we need to be really clear about what it is yeah. we're looking to accept. And probably more importantly, we need to be really clear about what we're not looking to accept. Um, Beth, did you by any chance take a look at the kind of like bare bones <coughs> yep. that I sent out? I guess it was over. I think you sent it to time. everyone, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, so Shane sent it, us. It needs a lot of, you know, a lot of work as far as building in specifics, but I think it's a good place to start from um, in coming up with what you're talking about. Um, Unfortunately, <clears throat> something like the town approving a buyout or not is really more black and white. There's no middle ground. It's how, how do we accept any without accepting all? And, and Shane, did you poke around? I mean, we don't need to invent this wheel. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, every town in Florida must do it. There, there aren't a lot of them that are publicly available, but I, I found some that were publicly available. I think one was in Florida, one was in Louisiana. I think I found one even on the FEMA website, if I remember correctly. Um, just some language that could be modified and, and um, you know, again, I just kind of put down bullet points uh, and tried to come up with things that I thought were important to add to this to the discussion, um, such as you know, making sure that we're being equitable in our decision making and taking those things into account. Um, but you know, so Shane has ten points. I'm just going to not read the whole thing. I'll read the ten points: an equity framework and guiding principles, community engagement and stakeholder involvement data-driven decision-making, criteria for property selection, equitable decision-making, support for resilience and mitigation, fair compensation and relocation. We don't de we don't determine the compensation, by the way. That's not something that we're we, and we're not part of the relocation either, either right? Um, compliance and legal considerations, and that's not us either. That's the state and the federal government. Well, I, um, I think that part is making sure our policy complies with Anything that exists. Is it your sense, Shane, that... Um, Can I just finish? Yeah, and then I'll, okay. finish. Long-term planning and evaluation, and then review and revision process. So. so, yeah, there's one or two things that we can cross off there. For sure. Go ahead. Um, is it your sense that, um, you know, the state sort of set a precedent by um, demolishing the mobile homes on the state bill? Are, 
will that happen with these properties or will it? Because my sense is the property owners are going to have to pay for removal. No, we don't like it's a covered cost. It's a covered cost by FEMA. FEMA covers it. So we don't have to like, okay, that's not our concern. Yeah, I, our concern I, I is realize. are we accepting the property for our maintenance and ownership in no, the long run? Um, but that's all FEMA and and FEMA covers costs if they cover the buyout. And if they don't, then the state has all these things. There's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but that's not us. Uh, us is we accept responsibility of this parcel. Right. When when we accept it, it will be minus the buildings. It'll is be. We will thing? accept the parcel when it is flattened and green. Yes. Yeah. That was and then we we going. could potentially have the option of lowering it to it, create additional flood space. We or, cannot build on it, but we can do anything that would help with mitigation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we can build on, we can build like green space. We, green space. we can put picnic tables on it. We could create a rest space, but we can't yeah. create a, any buildings, any structures. Yeah, there might be some of those parcels that could provide access to the river. There certainly are. Pun intended. <laughs> yeah. We can put a dock right in the middle of them. Yeah, you might, you know, there's certain times you might need a boat. But... Um, okay. So, I think our takeaway is let's go. So, you now have some reference points to folks who are interested. Um, I think that pulling up, resurrecting the email that Shane sent on the 7th of November um, and just looking through, and Shane, if you want to update according to the yeah. things that need to be yeah. deleted. Um, we can contribute to this, so I think it's set up so that we can edit. Um, you might be able to, but it's uh, published. If you can, we can't. I can share okay. access. Um, actually, don't do that. That's open meeting violation. Don't do that. Um, so if you have feedback, give it to Shane directly, or we can discuss it in our in a follow up meeting. But I think by mid January, we should have a goal of. <laughs> at least having a general understanding of whether or not we want to put any limitations on accepting buyout. Uh, and if we do, generally what we want them to be. If it's as clear as Evan's like, if we accept one, we accept all, I don't actually necessarily agree with that because I would want proof of flood risk. Uh, so you'd want photos of that structure flooded? Uh, no, not necessarily. We have, I mean, we know where the water went. So Certainly do. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the, the data driven decision making comes in is we establish some sort of metrics that we're going to use to determine is this something that, you know, reaches reaches the level that we consider for a buyout. But if they, <coughs> if the state is considering them eligible for the buyout to begin with, isn't that almost? Already at thresholds? It could be. I don't know what the state's requirements are. My understanding is that. this. By the way, that state form, though, that buyout form that we're referencing, that's not the state's form uh, for eligibility. That's just people saying, I'm interested in buyout. So there is no, qual there is no qualifier on the form that the state opened up to get interest. They don't have to have had some flood damage. Okay, even if that was a qualifier that the state said in entering into their form, there was nothing that is restricting anyone from entering anything into that form. It was just collecting interest. <clears throat> okay. uh, with the intent that, that the um, Vermont Emergency Management would reach out to, individ to individual people at some point in time, which they knew that they knew that they were ready to act or assist the property owners. But I understand what you're saying, but if if they move to the next step of actually making an application for the buyout at that point, wouldn't there be some 
qualifying. I would imagine. And, qualifying. and maybe it could be as simple as we follow the state. That's what you're saying. Yeah. By yeah, the time it reaches us, it went through a hurdle. Well, but it's what it's saying. Saying. <laughs> so about state, I would think the feds would have the real final say. There's well, two do accept the state. There's, there's two gonna, funding pools. The one funding in. pool is through FEMA, and if you're denied by FEMA for whatever reason, the state has right. a second additional pool. And actually, there's some. Uh, they're trying to work. The state's trying to work with FEMA now to facilitate the process on behalf of the town, so that way, by the time it comes to the board, everything's done, so that you just have to agree to name, agree to accept it or not accept it. And a lot of the preliminary work will be handled by Vermont Emergency Management. Um, the last meeting I had with um, just kind of a meet and greet with a new regional emergency management person, but we, as him has said, was Harry Chapman. Um, and so that's transition. So the state is moving forward so that the towns are going to have less of a role in the process and the decision making and more. And so the only decision the town should make moving forward is just at the property transfer at the end. Um, Will we have to tell them whether or not we would accept the property before then, and then it would be the transfer? Yes, yeah. I mean, I guess that's the acceptance of the transfer, yeah. Yeah. And there's no role for the village in any of this? All town. Even though it's all village property, no, so. Well, it's a town still, and village it's property, the village, but, but it's also yeah, the yeah, taxes in the town, too? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So your point earlier about thinking about what we might not want to accept might be more the way I'm thinking about it is what what would be a you know what would be a no go? I agree, and maybe we need to ask the state like what is acceptable for us to say no to yeah. if we were to say no. I mean, if it seems to me if they're going through a comprehensive review of eligibility and application, and it's a combination of state and federal, they yeah, not be that much have to worry about it. To play. The only risk to the town is really the loss to the grand list value. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's no responsibility after acceptance. So you can let it grow up to a riparian yeah. buffer. Absolutely no responsibility. You can choose to maintain it to a certain minimal level, or you can choose to just let it grow back to the wilds that it is. And that, and so the only true risk to the town is that loss of the grand list, which is, when you have the number of properties that we have, it is significant, and we should be mindful of. But then again, we also have residents who don't have a home, and who are we to say you can't sell your house and somebody's willing to buy it? You know, that's like an interesting conversation in itself, right? Um, we also have none of those houses will be sending kids to the school either. Yeah. I mean, it's a loss, it's a loss in grand less value, but yeah, it might point. actually be a savings in tax dollars. Honestly, a cases. lot of it is a loss of a single family or owner occupied home. That's what I'm thinking in the village. Um, yeah. And schools actually want kids because kids come with money. Mm -hmm. you know, it isn't like the old days. No, I, I get I get that too. I'm just saying that it, it, it will be a loss in grandma's value, but it might also result in a reduction in cost. Okay, um, let's move on, shall we? Debris management plan. Um, so Athena is in finals right now. She's a student at UVM. She's not going to be free until 8 p.m. Should we come back to that? Sure. Uh, her and I will text when she be free. <coughs> and through a local agreement for town assessor adding Berkshire. Uh, we, are we, do we have anything else? We're getting Berkshire for this? I thought we already agreed to the Berkshire last meeting. Well, we agreed in concept to amend the interlocal agreement. So what we're looking at tonight is the actual changes to the interlocal agreement. Okay. Is this what we want to discuss in an executive session? That's the assessor aspect of it, which is oh. not the same. Okay. So we're on page 16. Good reason to go into executive session. I would suggest we just deal with it in open session. Okay. That would be nice status of the other time or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's on board and has uh, a food. Yes. 
Yes, and Berks, my understanding <laughs> is that Berkshire has um, approved, they're going to make a final decision on the actual agreement and sign it at their next meeting, which is next week sometime. But they've approved in concept joining um, the interlocal agreement. And everyone is good with the shared additional uh, benefit and we've sent everybody copies of you know the, the okay. information and Ron and I had a direct conversation with St. George a month ago. And they looked at it. Yeah. Yes. Do the fees assessed by Johnson for maintaining payroll benefits? that part of this agreement or is that outside of this agreement? No, it's part of this agreement and I talked with Rosemary and she suggested going from $25 to $30. Oh, great. And that's been updated and all that stuff? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So for the purpose okay. of the discussion, I was moving that we accept the draft changes to the interlocal agreement. Second. I'll second that. Thank you, Dr. <coughs> yes, thank you. Agreed. Uh, okay, any discussion? I mean, I think this is pretty much what it was before with a few like, edits are shown. Yeah, it is, yeah. mm -hmm. one, of, one of the edits really is uh, it shows a reduction in the scope of work and the focus of the supervisory uh, person, which I, you know, I also discussed in the offer of employment letter. So it's a reduced, it's a really purely supervisory role at this point, which will result in a considerably less total expense. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Can we authorize, uh, can that vote? Did you? I moved it, didn't I? You did. Can I, can I make a, an yeah. additional portion to have that? Sign this agreement on behalf of the town of Johnson. Uh, do you accept that? Yes, Wait, I, I thought Shane seconded. I think we both did. I also accepted this agreement. So, Shane Perfect. so whoever we'll, Donna we'll let Donna figure that out. Okay. I, I seconded it. Thank you. You also thanked him, so <laughs> make sure that gets in the minutes. Yeah. Really. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, ready to vote? Yeah. Yes. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Yes. Do we have a clean version of this? I can send you one. Okay. Only be explicit. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, okay. Actually, I may have it on the computer here. It would make things more interesting if it was an explicit version. And enjoyable. Okay, formal request for Lamont County Planning Commission to host a meeting of towns affected by flood with the Guyon um, wa Lamoya watershed to consider options for reducing or maintaining the impacts of floods on a comprehensive, comprehensive basis. Do you want me to explain that one quickly? Yep. So uh, very quickly, um, David Williams and Eric Osgood, who described themselves as the smallest think tank in Northern Lamoya, um, have proposed that uh, we look at a comprehensive planning process, river, river basin, uh, <laughs> comprehensive planning process for flood mitigation. And LCPC has agreed to host a meeting um, for that purpose of all of the affected uh, select boards, interested people, planning commission people, whatever. Um, but they would like that request to come from the Johnson Select Board rather than from two individuals in the community. So our ask is to have This is beyond official. Lamoille County, right? We're not talking about Lamoille yeah, County. Yeah, no, we're talking about the um, entire which, even in the Jindan County. Three yeah. counties? Three counties to yeah. So should the state organize this and not Lamoille County Planning Commission? Not gonna happen. What do you mean? What L C P C is is what what their thought process is is that they would get those key state people in the room. Um, to look at ways that we might be able to look at it comprehensively. Yeah, they would collect up the uh, people from California County also. Yes. Okay. Once it leaves the water, 
The most, the, the majority of it is probably the Monte County, but um, yeah, I think probably the majority of it is. Okay, um, that sounds good. I got a call from Paul who wanted to be here, um, but there was a tree in his driveway on his Paul attempt Warden. to leave. Paul Warden, yes, um, and he's also been talking with. Wilmot County Planning Commission and the Planning Commission is about to dive in to flood mitigation and watershed in their report. So the timing is good. Um, and he just wants to make sure that the Planning Commission is deeply involved in all of this. We'll make sure they get an invitation. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I guess a formal motion made Request LCPC to facilitate a Memorial River Flood Basin organizational meeting. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, have it. Thomas, can you do that officially to let the Kasha know? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, Committee appointment policy proposal. The proposal is intended to streamline the appointment process while keeping committees and the select board informed of applicants and recommendations. Version and actually just made some <coughs> small edits in real time. Um, but it's just a little cleaner and less wordy and just kind of makes it easier for people who want to volunteer, easier for the group to know their role moving forward, and then also easier for the select board to um, know their role and also how to direct volunteers, um, both interested and both concurrently on municipal groups. What is the difference between 30 and 32? Um, Just to repeat. Oh uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a new one, but I guess I saved it under the same name. So the old one was very wordy and paragraphy, and the new one is just like clean bullet points and just. But these are the same, right? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I disagree. Okay. With you. Yeah, and I. Um, so I'm actually cleaning this up in real time, and I made some other changes just to like match appointed versus supported and just sh make shall instead of should and um, and also add some clauses about select board reserves a right not to recommend volunteers that were recommended and um, and just cleaning up um, who's responsible for the advertising and recruitment and leaving that to the select board as opposed to the volunteer groups themselves. Um, can I suggest that I send out this clean version and deal with it on the 18th? Yeah, because this is I, the old one. Yeah, uh, this is the new one, but I actually have made new edits since. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't want to look at something that's in draft. Yep. Yeah. 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 So if you can send it to us in advance. I already added it. So the, the if you could send it in advance, Tom, so we can look through it. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay, can you just highlight the changes from the old one? Though? Absolutely. Either give us a red line strikeout or, or highlight the changes. Absolutely. Yeah. Track changes. Track changes. Fine. Okay. Um, updated dilapidated building on Stern Street. Dean, do you want to take the floor? Dean, do you mind uh, just getting closer to a microphone? Will that pick him up okay? Uh, you should be okay, apparently. Uh, which, which one are you? Dilapidated on Stern Street. Stern Street? 100 C. Oh, you mean uh, 100, uh, the 100 C, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you say Stern Street, I was like, like three I was more like, times, I'll be like, oh, like, oh Stern Street. Street. Yeah, like, all right. Sorry. Um, uh, as, the, as the update I put out, uh, select board request, I sent out a certified letter to the post office box that the uh, owner according to the town has and gets his um, um, information for taxes and whatever. 
uh, Senate registered and certified so that I would get a return ticket when they sign for it and get and get notified uh, when it actually arrives. I have yet to receive any of that um, back, uh, and it's been uh, oh, over 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 a couple of weeks. Um, so going back, falling back onto uh, finding some uh, any other alternative addresses or any other alternative communication that I have, I do still have the. Uh, communication for information for the Sun but I don't have anything else further for the actual land owner than that PO box um, so um, that's where we're at um, in the letter I did I did make note that I was giving him notice that I was going to do another inspection which I did on the 16th just for you know for a timestamp and I also said of course uh, due to the board's request um, set down a deadline for when uh, fines were going to start uh, accumulating um, until mitigation would, and would be taken care of. So that's that's my update at this point. And has the deadline passed? Yes. yes. And are we now charging? We are now in, well, I guess my 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 thing is that I have no record whether this person has been informed of that. But I don't think that, like, I think if you sent a certified mail to the address on file, yeah. you've done your due diligence at this point. Okay. I just didn't know if, I mean, my personal question was, like, whether they had, would they technically be considered informed if they have not actually signed and picked up that? according to the dilapidated building uh, ordinance itself. I think it just does it does it does deliver. it count as being informed. Mm -hmm. So what what's is it an out of state address? No, it's Hyde Park. It's Hyde Park? It's a PO box in Hyde Park, yes. Well, let's have let's have somebody issue service. I mean I think that's a great idea. Well, I, I, I think it's I think it you raise a good point. I think if they have not, if you don't have a return, return receipt, then it really raises a lot of questions. I think the person can say, I never got it. Um, but if we serve it, uh, you know, the sheriff can do it. Um, you know, the constables in Hyde Park can serve it. But there, there's no other serve. address than a P.O. box. Have you um, so. checked with the town clerk in Hyde Park to see if that person is a property <coughs> owner or registered voter. See if there's no, I have not gone to that. I Maybe can... that's something you and I could work on sure. to try to sort that out. Yeah. yeah, just to try to see if there's another address somewhere else. Just to serve, even you know, you can't serve a box, so yeah, right. But you might be able to get the address somehow. I believe it's doable. Okay, thank you. Yeah, keep, sure. keep pressing. Yep. Appreciate it. Um, did you have anything else on the dilapidated buildings? No, I do not. Okay. Okay. But um, you did do you did do a, another inspection and you yep. documented that. Yep. I have that report. I can okay. send that to you guys. It, I mean, it's a it's pretty much just straightforward. As long as you've got a file on it. Yep. And I am. I have keeping it. it that's, yep. You know, we don't need to, I don't yeah, I wanted to just have that timestamp updated and just and give them notice that I was doing that and, and go from there. So, yeah. Because if I remember that process, the, they they can request a hearing before the select board or it's true. or or do we even have do we have to initiate the hearing to upon to at least ten days action? advance written notice the owner of the premises, the select board ship. Uh, to the owner of the premises, the select board shall convene a public hearing to consider and act upon the inspection report of the inspection official. At such hearing, the select board shall allow testimony and evidence from the owner and or tenant of the premises or property, town officials, agents, and employees, and the public relating to the condition of the premises. Following such hearing, the select board shall deliberate and may determine that the premises can uh, constitute a public nuisance based upon specific findings. So it sounds like we do need to have a hearing either way. 
but let's try to serve and then we'll do the hearing. Did you talk to the sun bee? I have not since the since the the previous, you know. Um, Would that be a worthwhile avenue to reach the actual owner? Well, with the direction the board uh, asked me to take the last time, we we felt like going to the owner of the property and not through the son would be. But the son, I still have the community. I still have the information to connect with if if we feel we can. We need to go that route. So. Well, maybe maybe the son can give you a valid address or location. I I agree that the person who gets served should be the owner of the property. Yeah. Um, maybe the son has a power of attorney. Who knows? Or maybe that's where I was headed. Does yeah. the son have contact information? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's another. Yeah, so I think asking the son if he has power of attorney is like an important question. And if he doesn't, then do you have an address? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thanks, Dean. Mm -hmm. um, rail Trail Committee organization, minute taker for the Rail Trail Committee. Well, Dean is still here. Can we, he gave us an update on the dog, the animal control issue stuff too. It's not specifically on uh, the agenda. But it is not on the agenda. I'll just there's, say that there's a, a meeting that was sent out that's set up for the 18th, of course. I think this is the second meeting they've set it up the same date as our select like board meeting. Um, but there is a meeting set up on the 18th, and Dean, you're a recipient of that. Are you planning yep. to attend? Yes. Yeah. Um, and Hyde Park is organizing with a bunch of other towns to understand interest and the kenneling that they're working on. Yes. The um, Real quickly, the existing kennel, the Moyo Kennel, is willing to potentially explore the idea of uh, leasing out a wing that they do not use. They need to re rehab it in order to make it useful. It would be in isolation to their other wings. And uh, the, the preliminary plan is Hyde Park would take on the lease of that if it all works out and then sub sublease or what have you to all the other towns around uh, kennel space. And that would be that would be utilizing the, the kennel space. That and way. Hyde Park would take care of them in charge of fee? Um, Hyde Park would be the main leasey of, of the property. Um, the, the actual, a lot of the specifics and stuff have not been worked out on like who's going to take care of the dogs, what, you know, where's, where's things going to land and where's it going to fall. This is, um, you know, a very beginning of a conversation, but at least it's a, in a positive, in a positive route. Um, and real quickly, also Chittenden County, uh, Humane Society, I've spoken with them and they are going to be sending me information on whether they would extend their contracts to Jonathan and to the other towns out here that after the seven day hold, uh, they would be willing to take dogs uh, uh, in. Uh, I do believe the charge was right around $100 a dog. There's no assessment. There's no, uh, there's no pre-assessment or anything that has to be done. It would just be a transfer. But there's a seven day hold. You know, yeah, by ordinance, you got to do seven days um, before we would be able to transfer it to them. But they don't require a, a pet assessment or anything like NCAL does. No. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. They require a human assessment. Right? <clears throat> um, okay. They're awesome. Thank you, Dean. Yep. Involved. Okay. Minute taker for the Rail Trail Committee. Are you opening this one up, Tom? Yeah, the um, real estate committee approached me about um, having the board allocate funds to hire a minute taker, um, specifically Donna, to take minutes for their meeting. Um, at that meeting, there were some other options too. I think option one, it's quite wrong. Option one was to, um, the best option that they felt what they wanted was to hire somebody. Um, there was also an option about buying a recorder for them. Um, and then also assisting uh, one, another member of the rail show committee to help take minutes. Um, and I think maybe you guys should Wait, speak. what do you mean assisting another member? What does that mean? Um, a member of the rail trail volunteered, but 
I think had some reservations and I offered to say, hey, uh, you know, if you do them, I'll go over them with you and make sure they meet up the meeting law before they get posted. Um, so just know that if it's that person, it will take some of my time to help in this. Does that seem like an accurate play out or? I think it sounded like what they was discussed. Yeah. And but nothing was decided. Decided. Correct. No, no decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, uh, meaning the rail trail didn't decide what avenue they wanted to go down. Is that what right. you mean? Well, I think that they, from my impression, is that they feel that the, um, the volunteers for this committee want to be idea people. They don't, and they want to spend their time giving ideas, compiling ideas and plans. To propose to the select board, but to be able to sit at a meeting and give ideas and be active and try to take minutes, nobody, none of the people are comfortable with that to do both things at that time. So that's why we want a day, a minute taker, whether it's someone you pay, whether it's some high school or college person that might be a good scribe that's in training or something that would be able to write down the minutes. And the purpose of the minute, because I've heard conflicting statements around this, so I just want to clarify. The purpose from your perspective is to comply with open meeting. There's not other purpose. Oh, I don't think that, that certainly doesn't express my opinion. My opinion is the open, the open meeting requirements are provide no guidance. They only look backwards. They don't. They aren't any white lines. They don't give you any discussion about future business. They don't. Uh, they don't uh, result in a quality product. And uh, it, it's uh, you know the people on the committee are committed to a quality project and, and working hard on it. Uh, and. Uh, is that consensus of the committee, Doug, or is that your well, opinion? Um, what did you What did you think? Uh, I felt there were five people present. I felt like two were impartial, um, and three were um, felt what they wanted more <coughs> more out of the minutes for probably accountability. Um, they wanted. Okay. Felt like they wanted like a like a record of what happened, um, and I guess if you in my packet I kind of wrote at the select board. I, to be honest with me, outside twenty thousand foot view, it felt like there was a lack of trust, and that they needed to be they weren't sure the select board knew what they were doing, and so they wanted you guys to know what was happening and using minutes as that vehicle. But it, from the outside, it just looked like, hey guys, you're doing a great job. You, you're appointed. You know, let's just focus on the great job. Um, and then perhaps a meeting for you guys to set priorities, objectives for the rail trail committee presented. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you know, just so that way it's pro it's like product driven as opposed to like accountability driven. But like, you know, what's you know, just getting to the end game and then that end game goes to the select board and in those select in the meeting, uh, where that where the select board takes action on that product is really where the minutes matter the most because that's the binding action. And that's kind of what I, and that's where you're gonna have the, the most participation um, and the most, um, but that's just my my take, like looking back to see why the minutes were needed or not needed. But that's just on the outside, you know. And I don't live in this town, so it's hard for me to, I don't skin in the game. But, um, but I, that's what I saw. I was, could I address that? Um, I was very pleased that Tom came. He was he, he was helpful and he was looked to be problem solving in it. Uh, the my sense is that we've had seven eight meetings and we already know what you would be working on and you don't need the extra work. You know we you know the the VORAC grant was driven by this committee and to meet the deadlines. It's uh, uh, I put exclamation marks on on the. Uh, the enormous potential of this committee for for this community, um, and the I view that you don't have time to do this, 
and that we're devoted and we, we would do this given given the resources and that at least three of us feel that, uh, that, that, that it's really, really important and it's three people with a fair amount of experience. Uh, and the, uh, it's, you know, I, I suppose looking to the uh, funding of it, you know, you have a committee that's not using any of their money right now, which is your, your racial justice committee. Um, and I, I just think you'll get a, a better work product out of it. And some of us are pretty serious about it. You know, I, I don't mean to, you know, we're, we're loyal to the community, but we're pretty serious about this because we think it's really important. Okay. <clears throat> Thoughts? I'll just add that um, as it pertains to the Racial Justice Committee, I have spoken to Sophia and Jeff, uh, and they don't have any plans on getting the committee restarted anytime soon. Um, so they were <coughs> understanding that their, their funding may be reallocated. Okay. Can I ask a question about you, you, you indicated what you thought the importance of the minutes were? Which I get. Um, the minimum requirement for minutes is a record of who was there, the date, time, and place, and the, uh, any actual motions made and the action taken on those motions made. So the minutes are, you know, I mean, they can be a page long. Technically, they don't tell you much, but they can be literally a page long. Um, or less than a page, depending on what you actually do. It seems to me the important thing that you said was you want to convey the ideas that the committee comes up with as important concepts that can be conveyed to us or or the community at, at large. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I mean, I'm sorry I'm so forward, but it, it uh, the, or I apologize for that, the, I view the state standard as a cop-out to, to, you know, it, it, it's a minimum to the public, but it, it uh, and the, the effects, of, you know, it covers the, the town or the committee's liability for nothing else. But it makes a big difference how, I mean, our minutes are extraordinarily detailed, um, which I think is probably good. The minimum is really minimal. It can be like a page. Um, and I agree with you that it's, it's kind of a cop out in terms of you know, what's required. Is there, some, is there some middle ground that could be achieved um, that would get the concepts that you want and feel are important? Um, or could those important concepts be summarized by you know, the board chair? Or is there, is there some way that, that I guess I'm reluctant, in all honesty, to provide a minute taker that's going to be almost like a court transcript, which is, you know, our minutes are very, very detailed. Um, I, I honestly don't personally think that that level of detail is required for, you know, smaller committees. I just want to get your thoughts on Somebody else? Yeah. Um, I hear you, Duncan. I think. I'm going to speak for us, but speak if you want. Um, you know, we we had our our chair taking the minutes supposedly for the last eight nine months. Um, you'll see on our website that at least six months of those minutes were never submitted, and we're never going to get them um, for whatever reason. She did not. He's not giving them up. So we're coming from you know in. And so we're coming from a bit of that place where we did have a volunteer taking them on our on our committee, and, and they were either not taken, they were definitely not submitted. So we have a gap of six months where all that we discussed, all the actions that we took, all the work that we did is not recorded um, in a way that we can look back to as a document, as a way that we can communicate to you all what we've done, and that's... Um, that's a hard pill for us to swallow. And it's also making us very wary of continuing in that, in that direction with having a volunteer take them 
we feel like you appointed us as a committee because you saw the value in what the rail trail can potentially bring our town and village, which is enormous. And for and we're here for a finite, you know, a finite amount of time. We we thought we we're a, a temporary committee just to you know get ideas generated, grants submitted. Um, and so we feel for the time that is left, it's extremely important that we have someone that's getting paid to do a job and will do it. <laughs> and also, I get that. Get my my question was how detailed are those grants have Well, to be? at this point, it would be good for them to be quite detailed. We, we go into quite a bit of detail about uh, our what we think our priorities and goals are and how we want to achieve them. And we think it's really important for you to see all those details, um, you know, so you know what we've talked about. But we Shane. see them when you bring them to us. Like, we're not going out and seeing what your working priorities and action items are. We're considering the action items and the priorities when you bring them to the board. So, from my perspective, I care that we're meeting open meeting law when it comes to the way that the minutes are recorded for the rail trail committee. I understand being on the rail trail committee or even being a community member, you might want more. I get that. But just from my perspective, I care that we're meeting that minimum because my expectation as being a board member is that if you want to act on something you're bringing to us anyway, so we're hearing the result of all of the discussion you've had over time. Well, you're hearing the result, but there is some, there is some uh, we, we expect we're going to be asking some businesses to come in. And uh, we expect that, yes, uh, yes, I'm okay with putting a, a, some water or, uh, or, or art pedestals or you know, bike charging stations or car charging stations. We expect that there is, you know, there, there's, there's some benefit to the rec to having a record with people in and 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 as well as you know. I don't think you know, you, you know, I, Shane is there and, and Shane is, is the liaison. But I think it's good for you to have a record of what we talked about. So when we come in, so because our product is just going to look like a product and. I spent years, you know, on commissions that had no contact, basically, or minimal contact with the select board, and it's always uh, new to them, almost, you know. So, you know, I, I the the minimum isn't an acceptable thing to me as far as my participation. You know? uh, in the interest to try to keep this moving, I think there could be a middle ground here. Um, the want for detail, if you get a town email account, it's going to come with Office 365, which gives you access to Teams. As far as I know, every Teams meeting can be recorded, like just with your computer audio. And unless you guys are meeting in a room this big, I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. And that would be word for word verbatim. The minutes could be minimal uh, for compliance, but every single word that is said is recorded. I don't know if that will bridge the gap to items being new when they come to the select board, but I don't know if excessively detailed minutes would bridge that gap either. I think a good example was the new appointment policy. Like I brought them a half finished product and to be honest, I didn't even look at it. They sent it right back and said, we don't want to look at a draft. We want to see a final product. And I think, and I think that's actually like a really good example is like, you know, they trust that I'm going to make a good final product. And so when I bring that to them, they'll have questions and they'll either accept or they'll make edits then. But the process in between it is, can almost be disruptive to the rest of the, the work of the town, the rest of the business in the town. And so I think like, that's an interesting analogy of like when you bring the product and like and bring time for questions. And, and that's like a, the opportunity for the board to then learn about the process along the way. But I, I honestly don't see that the board will go back in time to read minutes or listen to recordings to understand the process throughout the way. Well, um, my perception of having it is it helps us. You know, I presume that we'll do good enough work so that you'll be rubber stamps. 
but I recognize that you have the authority. You know, we're going to try to do a really good job, but you know, it's really for us. You know, I. It, it's you know, the history is such that uh, without a good record, you are just you're you're going over and over and over and over things, you know? and I don't want to do that. You know, well, I, I don't think. Concerned about expense? Is that some of it? Yeah. What are we talking about, like in terms of cost? We're meeting twice a month. I don't know what. Uh, you know. How many hours? An hour and a half. Hour and a half. So, yeah. so you have civilized a meetings, possibly. <coughs> possibly. You have civilized meetings, possibly yeah, four hours a month. Let's round it up to four, four hours a month. Yeah, I have no idea what we pay people for being minutes. I think three is really the maximum, actually, Mark. Would the board be interested in bear? No, we like, never no. need more than an hour. Now. What? Yeah. We're out. Okay, so we have other things we have to do. With the rail show committee, and she's not here, so I feel bad using her name, but I will. But Adrian volunteered to take the minutes, and I volunteered to help her. And what if we use a recorder, or what if we even AI is coming along? Actually, I just reached out to another town administrator and said, "Hey, what are your thoughts on this?" Right? Because it's a pretty emotional subject. So let's like, what are and he suggested using a recorder uh, and maybe putting those online or having them available um, upon request, and then using the minutes for to, to meet open meeting law to then give to Rosemary to be recorded, um, and then. He suggested AI is coming along, and, and maybe something like Dragon Software, or you know, to be honest, even there's a lot of transcription software that's even free, and, and maybe that's something that they, we can just have as like a save if we have a town email account. Maybe that's a Gmail account that's free, or maybe it's a paid 365 account, both <coughs> available to public record, where like that transcription software can provide the very detailed minutes, but it's not what's report saved and available, but it's not what's reported to the town clerk, and then we have the minimum. Um, requirements so that goes to the town clerk so open meeting law is satisfied. You know, is, there, is there like, is that the middle ground where we can like access, we can provide everybody what they need? Is the there a reason that wouldn't work? I feel that um, Adrian is a really vital, vital uh, contributor to our meetings. And for her to have to even do minor minutes is an impact, and I think she was a reluctant vote. She was. She was. You know, I, I, she was. I would like to. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to spend yeah. our time with you having you fool around with rail trail committee minutes. That's right. I, I honestly don't. I may be the only one that feels that way, but it's not. In my opinion, it's not. A, it's not a good value to have you do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd much rather pay a minute taker. Um, and I think there are transcription. I, I was going to say that it was part of my question about how how involved you want the minutes to be. How important is it? Um, because there is transcription software. If you record the minutes, there's transcription software that will spit out a set of minutes. Now it's going to take some time for you guys to look through that and figure out what's important. You know. So we that. don't. We have an interim chair right now that doesn't want to be the chair. We have no. Do you guys have any idea of anybody that would be available as a paid minute taker? I don't. No. no. I, I know, know racial justice was using um, Donna, who has not used them for what eight months now, something like that. So there was funds and time available for that committee. So. My ask, I think our ask is, is for that to be reallocated to us for the amount of time that our committee continues, which is not going to be forever. But I think it would be really, I mean, the work that we're going to do, I hope, we hope, will bring in potentially, you know, it's going to pay for itself. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, so I, I it just feels. Donna, do you have capacity? To... Maybe. What, what are your meetings? We would move them to meet your own. Yeah, we are currently meeting every Wednesday. Wednesday. Every other every, every other, other Wednesday. Wednesday from five thirty to <coughs> six thirty to to seven at the latest. Mm -hmm. 
I guess I've got something on first Wednesdays and third with third Wednesdays is the skate park committee. Um, I guess I don't have anything second and fourth okay. Wednesdays. So. Have they recorded them? Is it is it difficult for you to create a set of minutes from a, a recording? It depends how good the recording is. You know, if it's something like high quality, like you know, you get. Here, the video that's pretty good. Although, even then, there's often somebody who's like off of the side speaking yeah. quietly. Um, okay. if, if it's just a few people in a room, you know, uh, even a recording like on a phone or the recorder that the town owns is usually reasonably good. Because I think, you know, I think the advantage of having someone like Donna do it is she is very good at capturing sort of the essence of things that need to be mm -hmm. in the minutes. And you're not going to get that with an AI or transcription service. You know, yeah. You're going to get. Could you keep yeah, it so that, that you don't spend a lot of cleanup time afterward? Mm -hmm. Could you limit it so your cleanup time afterward, like you don't do as much cleanup afterward? I, I, I can try to. I mean, if you, if you if you gave me guidelines of you know how how detailed you wanted to be or how good you wanted them to be, um, we don't have to have them extensive. You yeah. know, like yeah. these by any means. Are you happy? Yeah. But I think that. So Kyle, your specific request, what you just said, was reallocating funds from the town committee for your minute taker. And your committee has permission from that committee to reallocate their funds in writing that you could send to us. I have an email from Sophia and Jeff, well, from, from Sophia, signed by both of them, um, that explicitly says that they are not planning on getting, I, you know, I, I will send it. To everyone. They approve but, reallocation of the um, budgeted give, funds. Give me, give me just a second and I will read respond. it. Just respond and well, ask about you can reallocation of funds. Okay. Yeah, she you says, can firm it up. She says, we paused the committee's activities because of uh, low participation. It is unclear if anything has changed in that regard. Uh, Jeff's ability to participate is currently limited and there is one other official member. There is no need to carry an allocation for FY 2025. Or we would like to remain a recognized existing committee so that if there is sufficient interest at restarting, we can focus on fundraising and a small slate of educational slash advocacy events. Cool. So yeah. that's about as explicit well, no, as it says reallocate. It, it just says, says we don't need the budget for it, but it implies we're not spending this year. I think it's fine. Yeah. Do we need a motion to reallocate? We, we to reallocate money we've already allocated? No. It's not really. We don't need a motion, and can you just confirm that it means that they're not intending to spend money sure. from now until the end of the fiscal year in June? Um, okay, so what do we want to do? And what is their amount? What is their... I think they were a thousand, right? Because they had revenue coming in. They were a little bit higher in their expenses, but that was because they expected grant money. For minutes for the racial justice committee, though, I don't think you were paying for it out of their budget. I think the agreement was that it was in addition to their budget. Unlike the skate park, but the skate park is paying me out of their budget. But I think the <coughs> racial justice committee, you guys decided that you that would just right. pay for them. That does sound right. So mm -hmm. that goes under select, mm -hmm. or I mean, well, I mean that sounds like a prior. There's three thousand yeah, dollars right for it. Yeah. Sounds like a um, the racial justice committee. I'm not sure what that's for, but if they're not going to use that three thousand dollars, it does make some available. Could we also try like an AI pilot, like just like yeah. maybe running two things simultaneously just for hoo-hahs? Because this might solve a lot of problems down the road, right? Just go to one of the meetings and do it. Right? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just like it's not. This is going to happen again. You know, like once you set precedence, it's going to happen again. And honestly, you know, I'd sound like a penny pincher, but I'm thinking of other committees that don't have minute takers that would like a historical society, for example. Honestly, they can make exactly the same argument. That you I think. was on the rec committee for years and spent like 40 hours of my time no every way. single yeah. week doing rec committee stuff, and I took minutes. Yeah. So, so it's like, it's, yeah. it's not it's not that we don't want to allow you the. The, the right thing of having a yeah, minute taker. I it's agree. There are other committees out there that, if they see this, they're going to say, "Well, we well, should I have a minute taker too, because you know we want our people well, to." Well, we're here now, and we we 
value what we do and we value our time. And if we want members to continue. <laughs> I get it, Kyle. I get no, it. I know I'm just know. telling you. I'm yeah. just telling you that we're gonna we're gonna have some pushback. I or, understand. You know, I think that weather. now, or more for this forward, board, particularly yeah, for this rail trail initiative, we need to go. We mm -hmm. need to really move because things are happening. Right. And we need to capture it now. Yeah. And, and, and I'm supporting. You know. Yeah. I don't think we're holding back the goal. The, the minimal meeting minutes. You guys go. Right now, we could save. Yeah. And I also agree with Beth. I think it's important that we comply with open meeting law, whether it's mm -hmm. you know, whether it's bogus or not. It's it's a requirement that ultimately the select board is responsible for. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. you know, I think we should. The minutes should be taken and posted properly and on time, and you know, the general public should be able to see what you're doing. Yeah, it's been it's been upsetting for us over the past seven or eight months. Yeah. This sure, happening. it has been. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we need a motion. Oh, okay. I thought I, I asked if we did. We said no, but um, I'll make a motion to reallocate the. Uh, Sorry, not to reallocate. We need a motion to allow Donna. I think it's not about the reallocation of funds. I think we should a motion that we and get a vote on getting a minute taker for the rail trail committee, not the reallocation of funds. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Of it. Then I will move that we. Uh, Ask Donna if she's available to be hired to take minutes for the uh, Brown Well, doesn't that mean, right? I mean, do you want to just move that you're willing to pay for a minute taker for the Rail Trail Committee? That. Yeah. Okay. What Donna said. And would it be. You're taking the minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> would it be important to put a, some sort of a time limit? Would that make it, you know, four hours a month? Is that agreeable to you folks? Well, it's agreeable to me. I know. That's why I'm glad so that wouldn't be any more. It wouldn't even three. be that would be more than that's how long we meet for meetings. I'm not sure what there's additional time for the minute taker. Yeah. But that's what we that's we, how long we meet for meetings. We meet for three hours a month. a month. I'm just trying to find that. That was part of my Soft question about file. whether Donna needed to be physically in the room mm -hmm. or whether she could do it from the recording. Donna, what's your ratio? When I used to take minutes, it was like. I want to just. Can we just move on? I want to keep moving because we have okay, a lot so to do. We have a motion. It's about one to one for these meetings. We have, have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Committee. You're the second? Yes. I'm the second. Is there any discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Marks for a second. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, town email account for Rail Trail Committee. Thank you for. Doing your work on the rail truck because it is You're welcome. super important. What's the cost for it's our super for email account? Yeah. Yes. That I don't know, and um, I think you're not allowed to leave that. It might be. I don't know if we need to do. Can we just do a free Gmail account? Like, what do you? Yeah. Like what are you? Idea, what are you looking to accomplish? I like the idea of them having access to Teams. Um, to be able to record meetings. We have right. Google Meet. I'm not going to record you guys, the, the email is if there was like a working document for that product that it could be stored and then manipulated with the track changes. Is that something you're interested in or, or, or not? I mean, we, we discussed it at the meeting, but we never really. How does that mean, you know, if we're doing working over a document and we're not doing it in a meeting, how does that work out with the open meeting law? It doesn't. Yeah, they can't. Sort of yeah, thing. well, that's why there's track <clears throat> changes. I mean, it, no, they it, can't. Yeah, do it. it tells you when you know. So you just it, you use it when you're in the meeting, and then when you're not in the meeting, it sits till the next one. Uh -huh. I think the other thing was for any communications with anybody that needed to be communicated with, um, you know, grant partners, or anything like that. But if the you mean having a town account gives it <coughs> credence. Or? Yeah, just I mean, and just. Somewhere other than their personal inboxes to be getting emails like that. Um, it, it, if you all are fine without it, then it seems like. I think that part was a plan B if we couldn't get the minute taker. And we, yeah, I don't think because we were. The other value of having a town email account is. Wait, can um, I just ask, what do you mean? You mean you don't know if you need a town email account? Is that what you're saying? I'm, well, here we go without having detailed minutes about this. I, I'm not, I can't quite recall why we were thinking about 
the email. I thought it was because we, if we didn't have a good record of what happened in the meeting, as far as minutes that we were going to, we were thinking we would try to have some kind of document. But Working I document, remember. yeah. I think we can't, can, really think can, we can scratch yeah. it. I, I don't okay. personally. Think it's important. The, the, the value of an open uh, of a town account is yeah. if everybody uses it, <coughs> and you have a freedom of information request or an open meeting law request, you can provide that document. Whereas if you're using your personal email and you have a freedom of information access, you're going to have to go through every single email that you get um, and weed it out. You know, weed out your personal stuff from the. Official yeah. businesses, but you can do that with a Google I've email too. That in the past, and you can do a screenshot of a search for a word um, because anything outside of like a specific word can be deemed unreal, unreasonable for for FOIA requests. So you can say rail trail, you can say moldy, Douglas moldy, and so as long as you do a screenshot of the search and then the results and then a printout of all those corresponding results, so there is. Th State law has has lessened on the process for fulfilling FOIA requests. Like for audits, but sucks. you know, it's like it's still it's a lot easier if you have an account. Where all you do is you log in and say go for it. Yeah, it's you know? a lot easier if you have an account. Yeah, it's all right. You know, like mm -hmm. if we have, an I just account, don't want to scare you away from like stopping business all of a sudden, right? If like, we have know, an account, we can we can we use that email to just send notices out to our our, our you know our meetings, agendas, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, absolutely. So absolutely, yeah. 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 I don't think it's useful for, you know, I, I didn't say anything during the meeting, but I didn't think that, that we would be allowed to work on this. You know, we could use it as a, uh, from my home and other people's home working on the document, but I do think it would be useful. You know, I, I'm not real swift with, with the computer and the laptop and whatnot if they're the same thing. And I think that uh, it would be nice to have this to, to, to circulate stuff in the committee, you know, just, just official notices that are going out, you know, and then we could, we would be prepared for the, and wouldn't have to do a fine point search or have people claiming that they have the right, you know. I was much more worried about that when I had a legal practice, you know, because, oh, what am I going to do with that? So I so. think you could set up a Gmail account and it would say the serve the same purpose, and you can set up a distribution group within Gmail, and it serves the same purpose you're talking about. And then you don't have the overhead and ridiculous security that we have in the town mm -hmm. that gets in the way all the time. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think with our accounts, yeah, we have a maximum number of accounts that we can issue. Yeah. We have, a, we have all kinds of things. And, yeah. Just separate from personal would, would be useful. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what you should do, and you should just be aware of not replying all when you're working on something. You could each have your own. You could have your own that just said J um, R T, and then dash your name, your first name, or something. And you each set up your own Gmail account and they all match and that's just your distribution list. Yeah. I mean, you can do some easy things with free accounts. Then you have access to Google Drive and then you have, I mean, that's what's nice is like when you have those working documents, it's just you open the meeting, you log into your computer and you just open it up and like turn your screen around. And that's kind of cool. And then you track changes, you know, like in red or blue or whatever color you like. I like blue. But, and then um, the other thing you can't do is just deliberate <coughs> after the meeting and say, oh yeah, remember this? Just, that's the only thing you got to be careful of. Well, can we set up the accounts now? Um, is that okay with I mean, Anyone can do it. I don't know. The committee can set up Gmail accounts. They can yeah, handle yeah, the yeah. own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Kyle can set up the Gmail accounts. I'm saying that because I can't, you know, it's not that I'm... Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Maybe Kyle's inside, got inside, it. Inside, inside the committee could work together on that, I think. You could do it, yeah. yeah. If if you can, can, that's capable of taking Number one agenda item. I would hope so. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, I'm gonna we are, we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> um but thank you. Uh okay, update on Vor uh Vorek grant and possible delegation of signature of authority. Grant to twelve fifteen. What is the Vorek grant that we're talking about? <laughs> All right. Did, I don't have the exact, I don't have some things like numbers, but the VORAP grant is to the, the uh, Rail Trail Committee, 
requested that the select board approve a VORAC grant for the purposes of uh, studying a scoping study for to find a safe, secure place for people on bikes to get from the rail trail to the village center. And it's essentially ready. Uh, what? Sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, your highly skilled, you know, man, Randall, has has that ready. Except I think he's waiting for something from uh, the engineer who is going to deliver it. And on the eleventh, he's supposed to. No, the twelfth. He's supposed to be submitting things, and the deadline is the fifteenth. And there's no town match if I. There's no, there's no town match. That, that's one of the first questions we ask. Is there any delegation of signature authority? To whom? To Randall? Well, I was going to delegate it to you. Oh, okay. I don't care. Motion okay. authorized chair to sign for rec grant. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you delegated it to uh, Beth? Yeah. yeah. She's my go-to. Beth, would you would it be useful for you to have Randall named as an alternative possible, or I just do it. I do everything electronically. It so. doesn't have to be like a. She's got that little anyway. sign thing. Yeah, I know. She got that little sign. It. Yeah. My signature looks exactly the same everywhere I go. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> except on done. paper. Um, okay, cool. Who are we accepting the Casey Romero? Casey Romero. Okay. Uh, thank you all. <clears throat> much. Oh, more red. Oh, more red. Red. Sorry. Okay. Uh, check that one. Resignation. Yeah. Go ahead. Move to accept the resignation of Casey Romero. Second. All Senator those in, Card. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Can you add her to the card list? Got a card list. Cool. I love the card. I don't know if anyone's ever gotten a card <laughs> yeah. from us, but we always ask for it. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. It's like my passion project. I bought a box of thank you cards. I don't know cards. if I got a card from my They're probably yeah. under plastic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. I think, <laughs> you, I think you resigned. Oh, I don't think I did. I don't think we offered one to you. Okay. In the real I'm really I'm really curious. Kind of of thank you. My box of thank you cards. Like Mary I bought got what? Oh, I came off. It couldn't have been up. Was there, so for appointments, was there from Porch Forum Post and the committee reviewed? Yes. Yeah. There was from Porch Forum Post. Everybody's yes, that's good. how we got the letters. We're not going to get backlash for appointing these. Yes, the policy yeah. was followed, which, which okay. that's what sparked the new appointment. That's what's, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion to accept. Full. Move to approve. Yeah. Can we say their names? Mary Lou Kopech. And Kim Hoffman. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Guys, have it. What did you say? I don't know. Either. Did you hear Kim Hoffman? Yeah. Yeah. Is it Hoffman? Oh, uh, yeah. Kim Dunn. Dunn. Susie Wright. Kim Dunn. 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 I know Kim Dunn. That's, we do that right That's now. one of the yeah. same. Yeah. Mike Collins. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mike. Oh, no. You really got to get. Where am I? You really got to get with the times. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the right. Okay, I think right. that we're gonna switch gears back to the debris management. Oh come on! Thank oh, you. Wow. Thank you. Just Thank you, folks, very much for your hard yeah. work. Oh. Thank you for our hard decision and tough economic times. We appreciate your I think it's tough this year. Wait till your tax bill next Thank you for coming out on a wet and stormy night. Nothing better than 1847 fire. Right, yeah. I know. That's that's the one thing. The municipal tax will be swell. People won't complain about it as much. It's just for a trustee meeting. Do you have a trustee meeting? You got electricity at home? Yeah. I did. I, oh, I love it. Do you have electricity at home? I'm on Marsville. I always have electricity. Do uh, you have electricity? Yeah. I do now. Is the call going to pay for me to get a new fridge? I'm paying for a service I'm not getting, okay? I wouldn't pay for gasoline, I wasn't yeah. burning in a vehicle. They're not charging you for the kilowatts that are not going through. Yeah. That's uh, right. The service yeah. charge is. Maybe there. that's why they're so broke, because it's out all the time. Hi, Athena. But you've got it back. Shit, Hi, Athena, can you hear? Hello, Hi. yes, I can. Thank you, David. Hi, Hi, thanks for Pleasant. joining us. Um, I wonder if uh, we can actually get like, the. Hey, is there any chance you could join a Zoom link? Do we have speakers, Tim? 
We actually do not today. Oh, bummer. Okay, never mind. This is this is good. Never mind. Uh, and can you hear Athena, Tim? Uh, I think so. Can you speak again, Athena? Hello. Thank you. Okay, you good. It. Good. We're playing some audio tricks right now. Uh, okay, and Yeah, the, I'm all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but I'll pass the phone if if you need to talk if you need to hear someone else. <laughs> um, okay. So work on we're talking about the debris management plan. Everyone has a copy here. Um, and I don't think there's been any changes since we saw it last. No, there's a couple points that we're gonna have to finish up after, which Duncan made comments on, and when we get to that, I'll print out his comments. But as far as on the body of the debris management plan, there were no comments. Okay, so I don't know if you heard Tom, but essentially the body of the debris management plan seems like there aren't comments from folks. Um, just looking around for confirmation. Okay. It's longer than our uh, length. Longer than our, a comment, I guess. our local emergency <laughs> management plan. Um, but, you know, that's kind of how debris management felt during the flood, <laughs> so that seems appropriate. Um, okay, so following the body, where was, what page should we be looking at, Tom? All right, Athena, can you take over to um, kind of direct them to the parts they need to finish up on? Um, we're going to start with the appendices, <laughs> which is appendix A, page 20, it looks like. And we just need to finish. Yes, so, yes. so appendix A has been completed. Um, the first left section is appendix B, which is page 24. Okay, page 24, yep. So that is space reserved for a flood zone map, which I believe is something Mr. Rosendusky is working on. He just has not completed yet. Um, but I don't believe that would need the flood force assistance. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, that sounds good. We should, this is where we insert a flood map. Right. Wouldn't, right. Wouldn't, Wouldn't, I, we'll insert a flood map in a few minutes. Once we get the new one. Very soon. Yeah. Soon. This year. This year? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go like ahead. And then I see the, that B also uh, is looking for the reserved space for hazardous material. Yes, that is correct. Oh, and dumpster costs. So for dumpster costs on A, just below the little map, space reserved for dumpster cost. I think unless we have a set price contract with a debris, with a... Um, that was one of the takeaways from this project is that we really should have a three-year contract with Casella in place for emergencies. So that way that's a part of the step-by-step -step process is the EMD makes a phone call to Stella and say, we need dumpsters at X. Stella knows where they go, they know how many, and it's already contractual, so we're not like scrambling to pull them from wherever, but that they'll, in the event of a flood, we get the first six, and it's just part of that, or seven, or whatever we do. Well, so is that how, in how much that's gonna cost? Well, that's part of the contract. You know, that's, that's it's really cheap. Contract. Is that how Waterbury had it set up? Because I remember they, they had dumpsters immediately. And I think it, was the same day. Or it was day Montpelier you're thinking about, and it wasn't the no, same. No, Waterbury water too, but yeah, it's But this contract sounds like something that we would have to have a retainer. Yeah, well, Meaning well, Casella would say, yeah, we can do this. Is if you have a debris management plan that says you have to have a contract, and that contract is price, you're now over $3,800, and you're now FEMA reimbursable. <coughs> and FEMA doesn't question it because it's part of your plan, it's part of your contract, and it's part of the process. Because that's if you have an event. What if you go five or ten years with no event, and you're still paying the contract? Well, I think I think that would be the terms of the contract is 
as needed. You know, not not it was not paying annually for something you don't use, it was just paying in the time of the event. <laughs> Well, I'll bet you anything, Casella is not going to give us yeah. a contract for free to reserve X number of dumpsters in the event we have a flood. Right. You're yeah. not, you're just not going to do it. Like, maybe I'm wrong. They were like making to, money hand like over fist. Where's like, your sense of adventure? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so the I mean, it's, we're in the weeds a little bit. Yeah. Taking away from the PSR. Yeah. yeah. But, no, and, and that is important. And. You know, coming up with a contract is something that I would support, but what Duncan says is, is true. <laughs> I'm waiting all year for that. <laughs> <Well. laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. I hear you on the contract piece of it. Um, Maybe we should have something in here about that contract very specifically. But uh, uh, that's beside the point. That's not the event itself. Okay. Sorry, Athena, we got sidetracked. So we were on the hazardous material, temporary storage, site map, and uh, debris disposal sites. Yes. Okay. So we'll have to insert those the site map and the disposal sites. Got it. Okay. Just thinking about that in terms of the flood that we just experienced. Um, so we would need to make sure that those site the site maps. Well, the, it'll depend on where the where the event occurs and the type of event that occurs. So we might not have site maps for dumpsters. So you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I'm trying to think this through. In the most recent event, we used. Bobby Hoag site for well almost everything, <laughs> and I don't think we should do that. So I think we should designate either the municipal office complex or the municipal garage complex as a as an identified <coughs> map site. Or we should identify parcels of land that are within the town right of way directly on the roadside um, that would allow for a dumpster to be added. Two years you might want a whole lot of land down there. Because yeah. because while well, river like River Road, we needed dumpsters down in River Road. And if we were just looking for town land that wasn't gonna work. Yeah, but this is specifically for hazardous hazardous waste, right? Oh, this is hazardous. Uh oh. Yeah, there's a few different. Hazardous material, temporary storage. And I don't, I don't think we necessarily want to be putting that stuff in the way yeah. right, right away. Well, A is uh, on page twenty-four. There's a dumpster map location. That is that's not, general stuff. That's general. Yeah. So that's the. I don't think we need to solve these slides, but just know that um, in like page 22 and 23, there's a significant. We can see that funny. It's okay, buddy. Sorry, Athena. Everyone here just gets distracted really easily. No worries. They're all important things to talk about. <laughs> I don't. Except the you are the distraction. Um. Okay. So yeah, to your point, I got it. To your point, Tom, we don't have to solve for it. Okay. List of waste transfer stations is missing. Got it. Map of the 2023 flood limits. Thanks. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> um, We're gonna get that. Photos of the 2023 event. Is there a reason we have photos of the 2023 event in in our debris management? Um, this is more added just um, to look back on and see what happened sort of during the 2023 event. So if there were any additional photos of how management worked or what the debris looked like, I thought it might be beneficial. But if you don't need it, I can happily take it out as well. Uh, no, I like that idea. Actually, as you were talking, I was just envisioning some of the pictures we had. Like we had dumpsters with posters, poster board on the dumpsters. I forget what they even said, but it was important, whatever they said at the time. 
Um, and also, yeah, we did have different types of debris that definitely couldn't go in the dumpsters. Tires, for And example, seeing the type of deb tires. debris that could go in was good too. Yeah, okay. I like it. When did, when did our first dumpsters land after the flood? Wednesday. No, Thursday. Yeah, it Water Thursday. receded Wednesday. I think it was Thursday. I think we got our first dumpster, one dumpster, on Thursday. Right? Monday, three. Monday happened. Monday, three. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday water Thursday. receded. They, well, they weren't here. I don't think we got a dumpster on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it was Thursday. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Thursday. It would be interesting to know when. I mean, probably Rosemary could tell why. Because well, we had the Marla. First one we got was Dan from Dan Sweet. Yeah, we had Marla calling everyone and Nat calling everyone. I don't remember when you came into it. It was. Were you calling people? I don't remember. But but we didn't, like that first day of no water, we didn't have dumpsters for sure. I mean, I spent <coughs> thousands of dollars hauling stuff over to sell it with my dump trailer because I was just like, it's got to yeah. Go. I had no idea. Well, you know, that's a good example of like, if you jump ahead to uh, page 33, the additional contractors. Like, well, let's not jump ahead yet. Yeah. We have to well, ahead. you know, it has to, it's relevant to like Casella and the contracts. It's like, you know, it's not just Casella. We could also have contracts with maybe people with 10 wheelers or dump trailers to haul like, on behalf of, right? In a suite. Exactly. You know, and, and those are contracts that you might not have to pay anymore. Um, That's a good point. And so, but it still would fall because it's part of the plan. Anyone with heavy equipment. Yeah. yeah. You know, and like having es people with excavators who, with, who have rubber tracks who can work on roads to line up to load those. Exactly. You know, and like having those contracts in place are almost just as valuable as the one with Bricasella as well. Just, just to think about, we don't have to do it tonight, but just like thinking about this. And this, thinking about this from the eyes, there's really two main objectives of this plan, right? The first objective is this has to be bulletproof, so the next time there's an event, whoever the EMD is, doesn't matter how long they've been in the role, they open the book and they say, okay, I need to do one, two, three, four, done. And then their job is now crisis management, right? And like, that's a little, that's a little summarized, right? But, and then, summarized. <laughs> the, second, the second objective of this is, uh, is that it's for to make reimbursement from FEMA so there's no more questions. So that we're already ahead of the game, so that there will be a next flood. And when that flood happens, we're already outside of that um, RS means and that we followed. We, we're ahead of the game, and that because we have this in place and we have those contractors in place, there's no question in our reimbursement. We're already at that 87.5% from FEMA instead of dropping down to 75. We're not taking risks. Because FEMA's going to approve this? If you have a plan or a policy in place, they accept it. And, uh, and that's that's the risk of not having one. And that's the risk that we face. So how about if we, instead of having a contract in place, we list vendors who are available? Right. That's that's a different question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, well, that would be a good <coughs> answer because I don't think they're available. I think it was that if you have an existing contract with the vendor, that's what we heard at the beginning. I believe um, it was not that you have it was not that you have a list of suppliers you use. It was that you have contracted services with someone. So you put out this RFP. <clears throat> Otherwise, you have to bid. For when there's you know it's the same process or, as having municipal buildings together, but you're asking for. You know, you're putting out so it's like free and open to the public and meeting low and underserved populations and having availability to them. All of a sudden, you're meeting FEMA guidelines, but ahead of time. So that way, when the, when the event already happens, we're moving forward instead of trying to scramble what's the right way to do it. Our, oh, you know, don't worry about the money. Let's take care of the problem. We already worried about the money and we already took care of it. And so that's that's one of the that's one of the benefits of having this in place. Well, this is sort of like we've already done the getting the list of pre-approved contractors for other projects. This is sort of like a debris management version of that. Absolutely, yes. And that's why I think the contract is probably more important than the list of vendors, because you can show that it was open to the public and met those same guidelines for procurement. <coughs> I don't know that for sure, but that's my opinion. 
Well, let's find that out and nail it down. Um, so list of transfer stations, got it. That's pretty easy. Um, flood map of 2023 flood limits. Yeah, that'll be interesting okay. if we ever see that. What are you looking at? Nothing. Uh, what is the event? Got it. FEMA 100 year and 500 year. Yep. Um, the flood gauge and historical history. Yeah. That and then elevation impacts, a oh, high group, and then town official listing rules. <coughs> that was in the form of a spreadsheet that Ron sent out. What early, was early their listing rules? The yeah, the town official listing rules. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I might have been the only one that made any specific comments on that. Um, What'd you say? I he had things like animal control officer. I don't even think animal control officer should be in the list. I disagree. Um, we had animals, like we had a number of people telling us that their animals were trapped on the second floor. Right. Yeah. Is that the Is that the animal there are still animals in the woods in my house that were left there. I think there. if there are uh, abandoned yeah. animals, yes. Cats? Yeah. I don't, we don't we have have rescued one of them at this point. There's do. another one. We'll <laughs> Yeah, we no, do like dogs. dogs only, but wouldn't the dogs have to be in the public to come on the jurisdiction? I don't, think, I don't think we want to send our large. animal control officer into a building that's. Yeah. You know. um, but I think that spreadsheet, to Duncan's point, needs some attention and it's a framework to be changed. Do you guys want to come in? But Sarah. I mean, okay, the other thing about the. The thing is, the town officer list and roles doesn't have to be a hard copy in this. It can be a reference to a link on our website, which is what it actually should be. And what we actually really need is forget the things that are needed for emergency. We just need a full list of town officials published somewhere, which we're doing right now manually in a spreadsheet. So we need to get that spreadsheet published. And keep maintaining it because everything on there should be public anyway. Well, I don't disagree with you, but the, the specific roles and responsibilities that, that were being applied were, were specific to for debris management. Yeah, debris so management. maybe and we some should... of them really weren't appropriate. I mean, some of them were just you know duties and functions of those officials that were. <laughs> I didn't think are related to fun. Fun. I, those are, those are probably the best point you said is like, oh, that's already their job. Why are we mentioning it? That was an interesting. So, but I, I think it just I think we can go through and, and make it cleaner and simpler and, it was, yeah. and easier to read. And I think if you look at that spreadsheet, so then say the emergency management director, there's we know there's a flood coming. He already he can open that book and say, okay, I need to call one, two, three, four before the flood to make sure they're ready. And if not, I that's need to in our, that's in our lab, not here. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's what our lump is. And that was part of my point was yeah. this is a debris management plan and some of the roles and responsibilities that were listed in that spreadsheet were more oriented type activities, you know, more like how do you respond to an event rather than how do you respond to debris management. Debris management should be a, I don't think it should be appendix, but it should be like a sub-publication of the lump. It should be linked to the lump. And that and that's it. Like it lives on its own, <coughs> but the LEMP is the primary document, and to me, debris management supports the LEMP. So how do we get? You know, I responded. I think I might be the only one. I can I fully understand that. Other people might not have been why, um, but somehow it needs to get. <laughs> we have this in a Word document, right, for the final touches and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, that appendix was in a was in an Excel spreadsheet. Understood, but it's not. It's something that can be put. Yeah. I think this is a presentation. It is. It's not about. It's not about that content, but we do need to plug it in. But it. What does matter is how we organize the way these things are connected. That does matter. 
because we shouldn't have five different lists of the same content that we're maintaining everywhere. Because the reality is, it means it's not going to be maintained. And I like your idea of having links to these lists yeah. because what's going to happen is the people on the list are going to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just change it in one Like place links to the officials and roles. All the right. content for the management, cool. Right. But officials and roles need to get linked. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have any more feedback for Athena? Just trying to be Well, we still person. have one more page. The oh. last page <clears throat> is the list of contractors that Tom was referencing. And it's reserved space, space for additional contractors. Um, Athena, do you have anything else that you wanted us to focus in on? Um, no, not particularly. Um, just seeing if you had any additional comments that might be beneficial for me, that's all. Looking around the room. I don't think we do, but we really very much appreciate your organization and putting this all together. Um, thank you for your hard work. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's such a scintillating subject, too. <laughs> what are you going to school for again? Environmental studies. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, you did you come by Johnson after the flood by any chance? I haven't been to Johnson actually, oh. but I've done a lot of research on the flood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lord. You would have seen a lot. To learn around environmental studies for sure. Uh, you probably still you would have been in this left town if you had any environmental concerns. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Not good. Um, okay, well, thank you so much. This is great. Um, we very much appreciate it. We will uh, certainly update the missing pieces. And I think that you can probably get some time back. So thank you so awesome. much. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dana. Yeah, well done. Well done from Mark over on the other side of the room. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That looks awesome. <laughs> you lost it a hair? It isn't, it isn't because I shaved my head. I have no one. <laughs> okay, budget. Oh, budget. <laughs> uh, library, revenue and expense, rec, revenue and expense, skate park, revenue and expense, historical society, revenue and expense, Tuesday Night Live, and then revisit. Okay, who, who how are we doing this? I think for the library. Uh, so did you work with Stacy on the library? Yeah, for, uh, for library expense and so that section and and revenue, right? Can, we, can you think of anything that we need from Justin relative to offer letters or you know? I mean, we've approved the interlock, so that's yeah. done. Do you want a copy? Do you want a copy of it? If you don't mind, that's is available. Is that okay? You have you got brain. have you got one that's a that's not a red line strikeout? No, I think I think I don't. It's it's still, it's still the draft. Oh, that's okay. So, so I so I can make those changes and I can forward you a copy and you a copy and you a copy. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was in just in high part, so I figured yeah, not that far. So. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't want to hold you up if we didn't have to. Yes, so. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Okay, library. So library, uh, I mean, historically, they've had a representative come in uh, and present their budget. Um, um, there's <coughs> nothing. So uh, once part of the process that was a little different is the board suggested a 0% increase next year. I was getting there. So right. what I'm really interested in, and I, I believe, I can't speak for the other members, but I believe the conversation was around a 0% increase to tax payer funded month. Yeah. yeah. Um, net so difference. net, they could get as many grants as they want. The, his, the library particularly is proposing an 8% reduction in revenue, 5.5% increase in expense, which would put 13.5% percent increase on taxpayer burden. If you exclude salary and benefits from that, um, it should be zero percent. 
Well, salary. Because they're down an employee or two? Or? If I exclude um, salary and benefits, I come up with an increase of 2%. 2%? Yep. Keeping okay. the exact same. I will. 2% um, increase. That's I'll, probably coming <coughs> heavily from tech services by the looks of it. Can I, can I go back to them and correct that to get it to zero? Certainly. Uh, but uh, again, you're just. My point is that is just expense. They could increase expense by zero, reduce revenue by 10%. It's still going to be a 10% increase to the taxpayer fund, right? Um, so by reducing revenue 8% and then increasing expense 2, they're going for a 10% increase. And the library's had a 30% increase in the last two years. <coughs> I will, um, I'm going to go back to that. All right, so the lot. My memory of the motion was 0% excluding salary and benefits. If I can get the library to 0% net increase, so that's revenue, you know, I understand. Is, that, is that okay? If it's zero net excluding salaries, I would be yes, it's fine. amendable. Okay. I understand then, salaries are kind of out of their control. And then if, if, they, if we can't come to that agreement in the next week, I have to get it done before next Monday, I'll ask them to come and present the justification why. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to be that on here. Yeah, uh, you know, I think with the library, the library unfortunately is a bit of a different animal than most of our other committees. Absolutely. And I haven't given this a lot of thought, but technically, I think the library, if, if they disagreed, they could probably petition to request a sum of money from the town to contribute to their operations and it could be voted on as a separate article. Certainly. Yeah. I was just having my conversation. Yeah, no, no, I I, 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 well, I think that's the way to go. I mean and maybe I am correct in the fact that the majority of that increase is tech services and maybe their thought process is they're going to need more tech services support and moving back in the library. And that's fine. Just you could just have like their their treasurer come in and sit. I also want meeting. to look. I, I'm in the process of negotiating with tech companies, and it's interesting that the library is separate from the town, or there might be some benefit if the library is willing to include their systems within the, the larger picture of the town. Like we already include. Uh, the highways tech services falls under ours. Why not the library? If we can get a contract that helps reduce that line, you know, and maybe include the library's tech services in, in the municipal, is that, are you okay if I look into that as well? Because if that's the reduction, then we might be able to get to it just by creating a level of efficiency. I would definitely be open to that. Uh, regarding the tech service agreement, that is an agreement that is between the town and the village and the tech service company that automatically renews. I'm pretty sure next year we're going to need to go through the whole rigmarole again. Am I right, Beth? You're the only other one that was there. I've been working over there. Eric and I have talked about this. Like, well, every time I have a discussion, we're very like together on this. And like, well, that's fine. But I you're talking about tech service for us? Contract. For the, you're talking about the library? Tech yeah. serv with tech group. He's saying combining tech services, combining the library's tech services under the town's existing contract, whether it's with tech group or some other. Well, like, why um, do they have to be separate? Could could save us some money. If it gains efficiency, overall. the library is comfortable with it, the village is comfortable with it, and the company we contract with is comfortable with it. Sure. And it's just yeah. a heads up that it's. I know. I'm not actually happen. comfortable with it. The, yeah. the library serves. The community with providing internet and other programs and I don't want our tech group to limit their ability to serve our community and I believe that's what would happen so unless we can be really really confident that that will not happen who do they contract with now I don't know we'll find out well the other thing too might be the same topic <laughs> if we integrate well, then we them, then all of a sudden that line item falls out of the library world. 
what we can allocate, what we can do is we can just say, okay, because the thing is, we're like, okay, the thing is, we're talking about like something that does not matter right now when it comes to the budget we're looking at. So, go research, do your thing. Got it. But I don't want to talk about it if it's not real, and right now it's not real. Sounds like play. So what else do we need to talk about in terms of so you're looking into the technical I'm gonna increase just, I'm in I'm going to give the library to 0%, and if there's a reason they can't, I'll have them present or give me a presentation. Yeah. For what it's worth, I'm just one member, but I think it would be nice to at least invite their treasurer to the select I agree. when we're talking about their portion of the budget. We should. Awesome. Conversations are usually been pretty good, I think. Um. I'm so to my I'm just trying to create a level of efficiency. Yeah, no, I get yeah. it. It's it's me being old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what other about? things do we have for our budget that we need to talk about? Uh, uh, recreation about. revenue and expense. Yeah, that is not looking good. What, what recreation? Rec. Revenue and expenses. So, so rec. I don't like why. Do we not have any ski revenue? Because ski is now, the ski program is now run at, uh, through Stowe. So no cash flows through the town of Johnson. Um, people interested in the program pay Stowe directly. They would kind of fall under this. So we don't have any expenses for ski either. Um, let me pull up. Was that a big revenue source? No, it was a big expense source. Because it looks like our revenue went down by 33%, and the expense only went down by 5%. That's what I mean. Which would tell me it's a 28% increase cost to taxpayers. So if you take, um, so here's uh, our number. Oh, yeah, remember. why are we paying $8,000 then? Um, For a ski well, club? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. Yeah, I mean, it says. We've always that's why paid. That's is. Two hundred and seven dollars, and yet it's still estimated at eighty-eight fifty for the end of the year. And last year there was a problem. Last year there was a mistake, and I forget what the mistake was, but it was a mistake where we didn't collect the revenue we were supposed to. Um, I think it ended up getting sorted because there's this whole like skin rye rental program. Like maybe this is rental equipment, but the thing is. If that ski money is going direct to the to the mountain, and we're still doing ski rentals through power play, we should not be losing all of our revenue and still paying the same amount. So I, I don't know if you remember I talked about like little micro spreadsheets. So I met with Dean. Oh, I remember. And we put in the numbers, and here you can see next year's is actually a five percent reduction. And for what? Net taxes. And so so that's like in net expense. Yeah, it's not though. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's right. not. Well, so here's the micro spreadsheet so you can see. You know, like it's just a formula, it's just math, and I'm not making this up. It's the same thing we have in front of us though. And <clears throat> the proposed revenue is eight thousand eighty one hundred dollars essentially. And the proposed expense expense is twenty six thousand. Prior year, year revenue was twelve thousand. Prior year expense was twenty eight. So revenue is four thousand dollar difference. Expense is a two thousand dollar difference. So why is our revenue down two thousand dollars? So revenue is up. And I can tell you why. It's because we don't have any revenue coming in from ski, and there's another five hundred dollars somewhere. So that's is it dance. Can you guys explain? So. I encourage you to like if you if you would mind just like looking closely at this little micro spreadsheet. It's a lot cleaner and it's less bad variables. And then you can it's all it's, it's right here. I can look at it, Tom, but I know the rec okay. budget. I used okay. to do it. Yep. Um what would you like me to do before the next meeting? I would like to make sure that the revenue sport by sport. So just forget the other stuff for a minute. The revenue sport by sport is correct as based on our registrations that we've seen historically. 
And if we're not doing something we used to do, I would like to know why, especially if it was a revenue source. Stop there. If there's something we were not doing before and there is expense against that same line, why is there expense and no revenue? I guess that's just a question. Why is there expense and no revenue? Because we charge registration for everything we do. So we should always have revenue and we should always have expense. And almost always revenue should be more than expense. There are some differences, but almost always. So I would like to actually go through each of these and make sure that we're spending money in the way that we should be spending money. So if you want revenue more than expense, you're looking at recreation as like a profit center? I am looking at revenue. I'm looking at recreation as a net zero. It should be net zero in programs. In each program, it should be net zero. Meaning we charge a registration for a fee for a reason. It should cover supplies, uniforms, those kinds of things over time. Supplies and uniforms, but not salaries? Not salary. Okay. Over time. Yeah, salary is not salary's in not in here. So, for instance, like the proposal is to bring in eight thousand dollars in revenue. So there should be eight thousand dollars in expense. Instead, there's twenty six thousand dollars in expense. Exactly. But yeah. we're carrying the rec. And so coordinator salary underneath office salaries, right? And the rec yeah. field mowing is carried underneath, carried underneath the highway department. This is literally just sport for sport. And so the way that I, I think maybe I misunderstood the request for zero percent is that in 2024 the budget was twenty seven thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. In 2025, the budget is 26150 a reduction. And then for revenue, there's also a reduction in the revenue to match like reduced participation, but yet the total net difference is a 5% decrease in spending. So like, that's not what I said. Well, well, there is a 5% decrease in spending. In like net well, spending. I don't know about well, net. So like the five percent decrease is just an expense, right? Yes. So that we're we're planning on spending twenty eight thousand dollars this year. We're planning on spending twenty six thousand dollars next year, right? That's five percent. Expense reduction and expense. He's looking. There you go. So we're planning on spending two thousand dollars less next year. That's a five percent reduction in expense. Great. But the overall burden to the taxpayers is increased because the rec, rec committee's revenue, instead of going down by $2,000, went down by $4,000. I'm going to um, get this to zero in, in the next week. And okay. I think that's maybe because that's the where thing there was is just the a... revenue has been flat. Europe. I had this problem the past two years, too, just so you know, Tom. Like it bothers me that revenue went down year over year, but the thing is, like, our our are you listening? Yeah, yeah. Up there, our youth population has also gone down. So I can I can like justify a drop from thirteen four to twelve one, right? I can justify that. Okay, that just means not as many kids participated. The thing I can't justify though is dropping in revenue from twelve thousand dollars to eight thousand. Do we not think that there might be? And I, I, this might not have been reflected in these numbers, but it's mostly. Yeah. Do we not think that there might be a reduction in a lot of participation in these programs this year due to flooding? So, or again, would that not be reflected in these numbers? So three thousand dollars of that revenue loss is from the ski club alone. Yeah. And yeah. then there's five hundred dollars lost from gymnastics because there's you couldn't find a coach. And if there's no coach, there's no gymnastics. It doesn't matter what your interest is. So should no, there be a five hundred dollars budgeted, but the actuals are wait like I mean it's, it says forty eight hundred dollars in revenue from gymnastics in twenty three. Correct. So now there's not a coach. Right. No, what what I'm right. saying is like the, that five hundred dollars is way under what we actually pulled in for it. And then in the actuals, yeah. Yeah, at the time the spreadsheet was made, there was no, we didn't have that number. And then, so that's the difference of the $4,000. It's like, but we're still spending 
on Squeak Blog because there's still like the rentals. Is that my, is that correct? I don't know the I don't know why we would have revenue last year and we wouldn't have it this year. I don't know. Okay. You want me to, to you want a sport by sport breakdown? I want to make sure that our revenue does not drop four thousand dollars. <laughs> That's what I want. Well, uh, I and if we have to and it's a justified reason, fine. But it needs to be a justified reason. I think the, the biggest reason Tom was saying though is this. Drop I get in what he's saying, but no, it's not. It's the drop in ski. The biggest is the drop in ski. I have a whole other comment about gymnastics. I'm not gonna get into it, but the drop you in did, ski is the biggest. You thing. did last year. Yeah, like, I know, I did it last year. I know. You That's what I mean. Though. Like yeah. well, I, I'm really struggling with the idea that there's zero income. For the ski club, but there's eight thousand dollars of expense. I agree. There's there's almost as much expense this year as there was last year with no corresponding income. It, how can that be? That's a good, you know, and I'll ask him. And the and the other thing I just want to point out is at at the level it's at right now, I I can't remember the numbers for sure, but it used to be that recreation got a flat amount of money. From the town, it used to be one line item in the budget. The rec was not even in the budget at all. They, I think, they used to get at one point maybe twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, that sounds right. I think maybe fifteen when I joined. It, it might have been. It might have been as much as fifteen. Right, right now, the difference between the revenue and the expenses is eighteen thousand dollars, and maybe that's reasonable. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe oh. that's reasonable. You beat me with a punchline. I don't think so. I was Personally. looking at uh, kind of just the trend. And in FY22, there was only a $10,000 spread. So the taxpayers of the town covered $10,000 and we're going to call a loss. By the way, and Tom, I'm not frustrated with you on this. I've been like complaining about this years. for like four years. And Two of them I've been on the board. This is the third year on the board. I've been yeah. complaining about this. When Beth was on back there, pretty much level funded. We made sure we were level funded, actually. Yes. And and we didn't have a rec coordinator. Like we yeah. got money, but we didn't have a rec. Like we weren't paying that salary. Yeah, we had a lot more volunteers. Oh, um, so maybe and we, and, and we had a lot more kids too. Yeah, so s sit down with Dean. I mean, maybe the rec committee needs to think about uh, the fees that they're charging and maybe adding five dollars or whatever. I think that's kind of something that I don't want to get into the weeds on, but. I don't think we need to add five dollars, frankly. But uh, you know a lot more than I do. So. Well, the right community used to subsidize people too. Did you miss that one accidentally? I, I assume. Uh, me? Yeah. I, might have. I think I think that's still done. Probably. <coughs> Are we good with the library and rec? I don't want to yeah. be, beat a horse. Well, see. So yeah. Um, what do I have? Proposed skate park. Oh, are yeah. you doing I'm sorry, time? Casey. Casey is here. Casey, I don't see you. Well, she can't hear her either because we don't have uh, speakers. Where are you? She's on the Zoom. Stop it. She's laughing at me right now. <laughs> Okay, skate park. If we have questions for Casey, she's here. Casey, we cannot hear you. Um, so just give us a minute to take a look and we'll all finagle with Tim. Um. <coughs> okay, fiscal year 24 and 25, revenue is flat. So revenue was not filled out by Casey. I actually had a conversation with um, the report that she gave me didn't have the revenue in it. So I took that number and uh, Rosemary and I disagreed to like slide over last year's revenue figures. And the two that are red, uh, Rosemary is going to do some research. Red, anything that's red is indicated by Rosemary. Anything that's yellow is Tom or board discussion. Anything that's green is a formula problem for me to work on, and anything that's blue is something that needs a convert, like an oddity that doesn't make sense. <coughs> to 
Um, and so we'll just create part as an excellent time. The pink, uh, those two numbers, the existing restricted funds and fundraising need to equal the cost of the half pipe. And that's why Rosemary is going to figure out exactly what's in reserves, exactly what the skate park agrees to fundraise, and make sure those equal that cost of the half pipes. So that way there's no tax burden. Gotcha. So it's just showing coming in <coughs> and then showing. So the expense side will go up, but it'll just match. It is, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's Rosemary's not done with that. Okay. Um, that blue $10,000 mark, Rosemary thought the board made a decision to pull $10,000 from something, but that's in a line that has no account and it's not in the budget anywhere. And so I have no idea what that indicates, the res reserve fund withdrawal. It's um, magic money. It's, but, it's, <coughs> but it's like, it's not in the budget from last year. It's not tied to anything. It's just like randomly placed within the spreadsheet. So I was hoping that maybe you had some insight Rosemary thought maybe you made a board decision somewhere along the lines, but she had no memory really. I think we did, and I think it was on the half pipe spending. But um, Casey, can, do you know what that ten thousand would be? Tim, you ready? Oh, you're on mute. Tim, can you put it back? You're on mute, Casey. Can you turn us back on, Tim? Casey, you're on mute. She didn't hear. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. Oh, oh, God damn it. Hold on. Uh, Can you a comment? Yeah. Okay, Casey. Sorry. Now, if you go off mute, we can hear you. Not off. The suspense is. There. Not off mute. <laughs> we got a whole lot of this. She doesn't need to ten hours. Of That's the sheet that Rosemary gave us a while. She's going to rejoin apparently. <coughs> okay. Which in this case, I don't think counts a whole lot. Do they have? Can she just call in? It doesn't matter we need speakers. It doesn't matter if we need speakers. Skate park reserve from prior years. And she'll go on mute. And she'll close it. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah, but all this stuff is just in the surplus. I mean, this is right. I didn't even know they had a separate reserve fund. Yeah, they rolled over all their all their own stuff. Mm -hmm. They rolled over. <laughs> Before we get into the weeds of the reserve fund, I really, really want to emphasize how important that those are. <coughs> Hold on, you got to say to everybody. Yeah. Um, those reserve fund numbers need to come <coughs> from Rosemary. And I think that was part of the discussion, too, is Rosemary really needs to get a handle on um, what's actually available for this, for the skate park. Um, and seems to be there's some discrepancy between Casey's numbers and Rosemary's and Rose, and it's just, we need to work with what's actually available um, from Rosemary's perspective. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. Casey's not back yet. Do we want to go to another one and come back or? Sure. Why, uh, that's why there's yellow there, Tom. Why do you have yellow there, Tom, in expenses? For state park expenses. <coughs> for site capital improvement. <coughs> oh, well, I think it's, it's probably a new day after half. Is this for half? Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, for half pipe in. You know, I just want to make sure that it's there. Uh, it would be very easy to overlook that expense, and I just want to, I, I made a note so that we don't overlook it. Um, I think we need to like do a comparison of how much each committee costs the town, like a bubble chart kind of a thing no, against guess, each other. When this spreadsheet is functioning as it should, um, the way Duncan showed me how historically it worked, where you see green at the subtotals, 
there should be a formula that calculates the percent of the total budget. And I think that's kind of, is that similar to what you're asking for? No, I just, well, kind of. I mean, I want it more specific to committee. So, so like, does the skate park represent like 5% of the total budget? Then you could compare it to the historicals, like 3% of the total budget. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Do it we doesn't do is, it doesn't net things out. It doesn't net the revenue out of the. That's what I mean. I mean net, yeah. I, I want to say net because I want to see how much each committee is costing well, taxpayers against each other so that we can actually consider do we think this represents the priority of our taxpayers that mm -hmm. skate park gets, you know, 12% of our committee expense or rec gets. 15% of our committee expense or beautification gets 3%. Like, like how do we, how are, are we comparing things? Are we thinking about this in terms of how we would expect the priorities to be? You know what I mean? Anyway, I'll do it. I'm talking like a pie chart of a full budget. <clears throat> I mean like a bubble chart. It's a bubble chart. Excuse like a heat map, like a heat graph kind of a thing. It looks um, like Casey is back. Yep, thank you. Um, Hi, Casey. So, Casey, we can't hear you until I turn my speakers on, and I can't. Oh, can you turn? turn Casey, I, we can't hear you until I turn my speakers on. And I am. we have to go on mute before I turn my speakers on, so I'm turning them on now. All right, you can't see me. And now she's muted again. And now you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this Zoom stuff up here is real. Yeah. It really is terrible up here. Yeah, I'm bringing it. It's like a pot pot for some Zoom. <laughs> is she still on mute and not knowing it? Mine shows the opposite. We can hear you now. Can you hear me? Great. She's saying, I can't so, hear. Uh, my system cut out, I guess, as I was, I was trying to say, I don't have the papers that you all are using. Uh, that, so, honestly, it's, uh, you know, we did the 5% cut for this year and then carried all that forward to the proposed for next year. But, you know, I, I haven't seen this additional work, so I, I can't comment on it. I think I just have to follow up with Tom. Yeah, it's uh, no changes Hold to on. the numbers. She can't hear you. Yeah. Of course, I can't hear you guys now. One second. Okay. 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 Let me turn my speaker off. Um, yeah, it's convoluted to have to do this, but we have to. So the question we had for you, Casey, is there is a revenue addition in allocated expense. We don't know what it's for though. There's not a comment on it. For $10,000 in fiscal year 23, Tom, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Fiscal year 23. It's part, um, of it's part of the actuals. We assume it went toward and maybe didn't get applied to an expense in the budget or it's still being held. Money came in from something and is being held do you have a expectation around a held ten thousand dollars for and what it would have what it would be for hold on i need to go on mute and turn my mic speakers on <clears throat> Can't see the No. Nope. 
Tinha que olhar aqui minha coisa. Quem seria de ver com a chama? Well, I, I don't, the, pic, the uh, figures I gave Tom, I don't see a $10,000. It's not from this year. It would be from, it was from, it's not from this year. It was a, hold on, let me just turn myself off for a second. Um, it was a allocation to <coughs> allocated money from last year or the year before it's from fiscal year 23 we're currently in fiscal year 24 so it would have been from july 1st of 2022 through june of 2023 but it looks like there was money that came in that was supposed to be allocated ten thousand dollars worth um and we're not sure if it got spent or if it's just hanging waiting for allocation Yeah, it's going to be anyway because it doesn't really, you can, <clears throat> hold on, I'll turn my speakers off. Um, yep, that's helpful and it's not like we, seeing it on a piece of paper is not going to help you either, um, by the way, because it doesn't have any description. And did, did that money come from a grant? Oh, if it was for the half, I yes. Yeah, from a grant, okay. Um, so we're going to go, we'll go away and research it and just confirm that. Uh, okay, <clears throat> it's okay. We need to, I think we just need to trace the money back and then we'll have a better conversation. So I think, um, I'm going to, uh, no, yeah. and there should not be a feedback loop. I would think the same thing. Is your case becoming now? Maybe if you disconnect your audio and reconnect it in Zoom. Okay, I, hold on, I'm gonna turn my, I'm gonna turn my, go ahead. The, so that works for you, Casey? Sure. Yeah, awesome, okay. That'll be good. So we'll pick this up at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Bye. I'm trying to figure out what we need to do to fix this. I think Tim probably has multiple microphone sources, and one of them is just taking over. Oh, yeah, see, so you're not even on the Zoom. Yeah, it's okay if we don't have audio for a few minutes. We have
file is TNL. Yeah. Okay, historical society. What's the scoop? So there again, we met uh, the same. <coughs> group. We met the same zero percent. Um, we're meeting. I want to say it's Wednesday morning. I'm going to sit down with them again and just do it. Um, just trying to confirm what we went over tonight. Well, we're talking about specifically just the historic society, nothing to do with the whole thing else. Correct. Um, <coughs> I do think there are those, I mean, that's another topic to just go over, but it's just a nice the budget of the historical society. Um, is that a, a zero percent increase? That increase. Now, when you say zero percent net increase, I don't understand. Like, I need to see a page or something. There's a reduction in ten percent. Yeah, there was, a, there was a shortfall um, of $1,700 in fiscal year 24, and that's because of Tuesday Night Live, the loss of income. Um, and so they're predicting 2025 to be similar, and that's where those numbers come from. Tim, I don't think we're going to talk to anybody else tonight. Tim? So back to the net discussion. Um, they are projecting a 10% reduction in cost. They're, project, they're projecting a 16.5% reduction in revenue. The net is 6.5% increase to the taxpayers. Their revenue goes down more than their expense. The actual burden to the taxpayers is higher. So how I calculate the difference is I take the total amount to be raised in taxes um, so I take expense minus revenue, and that tells me that the difference, 2024 net to be raised in taxes is $4,643. And then I take the change, the, the net to be raised in... Okay, so you're doing it on the dollar amount, not percentages. Understood. Um, and maybe that's better because that's better. They're, they're bigger numbers sometimes. And so, yeah, that's, so that's, and that's how I calculate it for REC2 is I take the... Yeah, the difference, you know, expense minus revenue, uh -huh. and then, so yeah, that's that's how I found um, they're at a 7% decrease for 2024 and a 0% uh, increase for 2025 net, <coughs> dollar for dollar. This is still, yeah, $1,500 drop on both. Can you explain what you, what you just said again? So I take the, um, the total expense minus the revenue, and that's the amount to be raised in taxes. Yeah, and that was $4,600. 4643 And then I take the... I, I'm not... Seven four one eight. You get forty six eighty two. Okay. So this year was forty six forty three. So I guess they raised uh, thirty nine dollars more. So slightly more than zero percent. I still like the percentages. Uh, I'm happy to change it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I, I can understand. do whatever whatever you want, which would do. I always think about a dollar. For me, I like dollar for dollar because there's no control on the. That's what we have control over. 
and then at the end, the tax rate, the percent increase and decrease, a lot of that is up in the air based on appropriations, additional articles, and the school tax rate. So, but at least you can say the town municipal <coughs> portion was an increase based on dollar for dollar. We need both. We need percentage so that we can question things, like why did it go up or down this percentage, and dollars for the difference, I think, for next. So this is a zero percent increase and should should it's actually represent a negative percent increase. Right, because it's actually ge revenue generating. Well it's, they, it's actually going up by thirty four thirty nine dollars, so it's it's uh, well they they're gonna raise $3,500 that is being carried for <coughs> payment in the loan to rent. Yeah. And we need to subtract that out from the 4642. You better subtract it out from revenue, too. Well, that's what I mean. Oh my so gosh. Can we get rid of that altogether? Okay. <laughs> Both sides. Um, yeah. Different conversation. The, the, the way it used to work is that the net revenue minus the net expense ended up being the amount that the historical society was paying in rent, in lieu of rent, in the part that I was having a heartburn on is that figure that you've got, the net, the difference between expense and revenue is 46, 42, yeah. not 3,500. So I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah, well, that, that um, was what it was in 2024, too. And that's what's interesting. It's, so that happened last year. Um, but they're not upstairs yet. I thought it was going. You know, the reason it ended up like that was because Brian came up with a new theory of how to do it, and um, well, it ended up increasing the amount uh, that, that they actually got in taxpayer funding. And I, I can't remember, if I think about it, I'll be able to remember why, but I you don't know, I remember what it is. That's a, that's a very large discussion. I think, I don't know if you saw my email today about that, but there are some loose ends with the building, with the historical society that needs to be tied up eventually and, and reorganized. And I and maybe I'll just tell a, you, I'm not going to look at emails I get at four o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I think <clears throat> I think for this, for the sake of this year's budget, we need to get through it, and then those loose ends will probably solve what you're talking about. Um, and also solve those outstanding maintenance issues and, and, and also kind of regroup everything because I think different parties are operating under different understandings. We really need to like tie that, bring it together, tie it off, and move forward together. Right? So that's a well and good conversation. And we may be able to budget some money for maintenance there this year. But as soon as salaries get plugged into this and highways done. We're going to be looking at about a seven percent increase in cost to taxpayers, and that's without the reduction in our grand list for next year. We're probably looking around ten percent increased cost to taxpayers by the time you take into account adjustment of grand list. We're not because we're going to have to and, cut things. And how this looks. So even level funding looks really bad, and, and it's <coughs> difficult to swallow. Love to talk about the historic society. We need to get the budget together. And a huge, huge sway in this is when the salaries get put in. Salaries and benefits for all employees is the gonna change that number at the top. Eleven percent, right? Huh? Benefits were eleven percent. Uh, that was their increase. I, I thought so it was. that's not applied yet. No. So let's let's well let's be let's well, like be logical about this. Let's take the increase of benefits. 
right? Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if we can do dollar for dollar for the sake of dollar for dollar. Yeah, that would be. So good. increase to benefits. And then we're going to look at increased salaries. Which is something we need to decide on what we want to budget for. Yeah, those are the. Right. And so we take those, those two. And then we also factor in the loss, the maximum potential loss from abatement plus buyout, or just wait, should just wait and just do abatement? Uh, just abatement. I mean, we could, we could budget uh, in our estimated finals for this year $20,000 in abatement. What? So what? Let's figure that out. Let's say that's, let's say it's that's not out. carrying it for next year. You know, like just for the sake of argument right now, if I figure we out those probably three aren't numbers get. and I add them together, I'll be able to tell you the increase. And then we go back to all these committees and say, "Hey, we're in trouble. We we started off at zero. We actually need to be at a five point six percent decrease." It is getting really late to be doing that. Like, we need to have this budget tied up the first week of January because yeah. we're going to have to make big decisions the second and third week. So not even the third week. I don't think we even have the third week because we still have to put everything together in articles and that kind of thing. Right. Like, yeah, I think, I don't think we have, our final select board meeting needs to be about approving the budget period on our second January meeting. And the warning so we can't fool around with this anymore yeah. like we got we've got to be serious and like and i'm 100 percent okay if, but i went to these people and i said zero percent and you get it and if you say okay we need less than that i'm gonna go do it and get it done but, but it's not zero percent like i'm just gonna say it's not zero percent looking at some of them and they need to go down more okay and if and the thing is, if they're not going, the committees aren't going to decide. We're going to decide for them and tell them what it is, and we don't want to have to do that. Completely understood. I just need to know the number you want, and then I, it'll happen. Right. But the other, the other part of this that we're not factoring in at all is how much surplus we have, and how much of that we can apply to reduce taxes. Which we were expecting. Preliminary numbers of what one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Minus. I'm going to go ahead and be honest. <coughs> my preliminary numbers in my head are done with $125,000 of surplus being applied to reduce taxes. Plus so, we have well, all that's the figure Rosemary gave us for 2023. Right. Surplus. $162,000 total. And when did you right. generate this, Duncan? 40, 40000 of that is from an article. And the balance is 122, but 162 thousand dollars is taxpayers' money. <coughs> Regardless, so anyways, you asked for a number, Tom. I can't tell you a number until we know a lot closer what the budget is. And the three by far largest expenses we have are public safety. That's the number. Public safety. That's the balance, not that. Is it? That's the sum of those. It's public safety. Yeah, which are in here. I could be wrong. Um, the only one to public the safety final numbers from the salaries and highway. Once those are in there, we'll have a very good idea what it looks like. So, so are you sure? yeah, yeah. Highway we're doing next week. We have those. We'll have that tied up. It's already eighty percent done. This is the balance and of the fund. So I really think we need to stop doing. Well. Because that comes out of this. So if well, I agree with that. It would be nice to have a firm yeah. number on what our budget surplus actually yeah. is. Yeah, yeah the idea <coughs> that's a yeah, foreign concept for me is like a planning a surplus, surplus, right? Which is total balance. Which we've left. done for perpetuity, I think. Yeah. And we say, oh, this oh, amount we're going to apply right. to reduce, you know, so eventually it's a, it's a net, you know, it's. it's a, it's yeah, uh, yes, you're exactly right. Uh, and it's, it's sooner or later we're going to catch our own tail, also because we're not going to have as big a budget surplus okay. to apply like we did last year, and therefore our, rate, our tax rates are going to go up. Well, it was very short. No, be helpful. And I think you know, and the, you guys when you start budgeting surplus. And if it goes from 160,000 to 125, you still have a $40,000 increase. 
you know, that's what's interesting about, you know, just because of a loss of revenue, you're still increasing taxes. And that whole idea to me, it feels like we're, we're gonna, we're running into a place where maybe it might not support in the future. Yeah, well, you're, you're right, yeah. but we've done it that way forever and we have to keep on doing it that way <laughs> for a little yeah. while <laughs> until we figure out a better Sometimes way to do it. Well, <laughs> wholeheartedly, part of the reason we had better surplus years over the past three years is because we didn't have a fully staffed five-person highway department. I mean, you add that fifth employee for a year, you just cut $80,000. Yeah, you do have a $40,000 economic development person. Yep. Which is Can 50. I ask a fundamental question? Do you sure. want me to budget worst case scenario for health insurance or as is actual? Um, I, I, don't I, care. I believe we always did as is actuals. That's why there's the health insurance spreadsheet as part of the budget. And once those yeah. numbers are updated, um, they all go to their respective categories. I mean, worst case is going to be a family plan for everybody, and we're going to take that line and we're going to double it. Yeah, I don't think we're <laughs> that's not realistic. Um, <laughs> the insurance's line will be $63,299 for the insurance's line. You're not going to include cents in that? No. So, yeah. It's uh, just a, it's a formula, and it didn't want cents. So no. I would say that we should pick another meeting date. Um, all of these, if you could sit down with Rosemary and iron out everything here in red yep. that can be ironed out, and really take all the guesswork <coughs> out of those. We if salaries and benefits could be filled in for everything else, you can take our comments on rec and library back to them. Uh, Tuesday night lives pretty straightforward. Public safety, I think we already covered. Somebody can cut me off here. Historical. You want me to increase their rent, or do you want well, me to try to reduce their expense? The thing that we always talk about at this time of year is the doc, Dr. Holcomb House rental income. I I believe that that should be increased. We have increased it slightly each year. And this is the first full year with the amount of work for that tenant being drastically reduced. It's yeah. what, $525 a month right now? Can you tell me what a going studio apartment goes for, Ryan? Right? With everything included? With everything included. Trash, heat, electricity, phone, I believe. Yeah, he's definitely more than that. How much do you um, 900, 900 bucks. I was gonna say 900. Not to take away from the revenue, but how much do you value his um, presence and support? It's a it's a board conversation usually. Yeah. Um, I'm not proposing going all the way up to the nine hundred dollar market value, but we always talk about it at this time of year. I think last year we bumped it from five hundred to five twenty five. Oh, four seventy five and five more. Yeah. Maybe. Um, there was an agreement that was sent out. I can send it to you. It's yeah, not gonna. Here. It's not gonna change our budget, um, even if we went up to you know eight or nine hundred bucks. Yeah. He, it, but in honesty, he's not doing as much as he used to do. When when the tenants were in there before, he used to sort of respond to you know tenant issues. He used to yeah. take the garbage, um, pick the garbage up. Right now, he's picking up his garbage in the historical society's garbage. Yeah. Um, I, he doesn't really do anything upstairs. He probably gets a phone call a week from us, um, or at least recently, anyways. Um, and so I guess I just want to make sure that like I'm not like taking advantage of him. I, I, no, it's worth something. Yeah, it has yeah. some value. Yeah. Yeah. But no matter, what, Duncan is right. If we raise it to nine hundred dollars, because it, it, you know, <clears> that's why I want to focus on the defense department. And, yeah, so, yeah. Benefits. <laughs> How much does that's it, cost? It you know, get yeah. the big things rolling in here. It won't <laughs> affect the large stuff. I'm just trying to. Yeah. No, but the large stuff is like we need to know. We need to know where that is, and then this little stuff we can massage if we need. The large to. stuff is all empty right now. Right, right. And we right. need to know. We yeah. need to know. Which is salaries yeah. and benefits. So from the 18th. We're going to have salaries, we're going to have benefits, we're going to finish highway. Every red line with rosemary. Um, red line with I rosemary. mean, while we're talking about highway, 
I looked at the weather and it looks like another storm light this next Monday. I don't know if it's a great idea to be shooting for that. Being how hard Jason and the guys are working, that's why I proposed another meeting date. But we can just always do a team. special meeting like on Wednesday. No, we can't. Well, you guys can. I can't. I have. Or a I'm committed that. every other day of the week. For next week. What about if we meet? Oh, like Christmas? it's basketball season. So, how's, um, how's Roger's budget coming in? The week of he, they voted Christmas Thursday. time around. <laughs> and so I, I actually haven't got to go. Did you get the final numbers back? What? For, uh, they voted last Thursday on the sure, communication and... I don't see anything. For sure. Control. They, Control. They'll send a letter. Yeah, so it's, I could probably call and get it tomorrow. I think they're waiting. They have to figure out the grand list value. <sighs> so... And then the highway, uh, the fire department, we also don't have yet. RJ has prepared that for the village, but I'm checking in on that. But I think, you know, at the end of the next meeting, we're going to have a lot of this <coughs> down. Um, would it be worth putting in another meeting? Um, obviously not Christmas, but the week between Christmas and New Year's. I think we're going to need it. Yeah, let's take it. But I'm only one person. I'm available. If, I mean, if would I'm another there, working I, session I, I be valuable? Weeks for that I'm. I mean, honestly, you don't, you're not working. No. Would uh, well, we I mean, just I, do I, a little bit of two person yeah. working session be valuable? Could Donna? Could you meet during the day? Yeah, yeah. During the day is good for me. Why don't we have a daytime meeting? Are you working that week? Okay. <coughs> day to make day something day work for something this important. Yeah, yeah if it's. Afternoon would be ideal for me. But. Did you? Uh, I'm not meeting with any you guys in the list morning. Of that's for sure. <laughs> on that shared spreadsheet. What? Yeah. Who are you talking to? I missed all the energy. Talking about this in the morning, but you what? What? I said I missed all the energy. Did you? It's not very nice mornings. Although I hate a nice too now, so I don't know. Um, I'm just rolling for a snap. I'm just rolling for a snap. I'm just rolling for a snap. Right. Much, so I could meet. I could meet on Wednesday. Off of what? Off of Rosemary's investment account. It's gotta be in there. It's gotta be a line. So isn't that really? Isn't that? How much has Mark made us so far? Yeah, like 0.6 percent. Although it might have probably went up. No, it's that. No, it was. I made her move money into. It was like a four percent. Four percent. How about Wednesday at two o'clock? Sorry, this is which day is this? Wednesday the 27th. Wednesday the 27th. At 2? That works. Hold on, yeah, that what, works okay. Wednesday the 27th at 2 o'clock? The 27th? Two days after Christmas. I, I'm not. Hmm. Are you out of town that week? I don't think it's going to. Yeah, yeah, my daughter's coming from California. Oh. And my grandson's birthday is the 28th. Oh man, and I'm going to their house in California. No, in East Mount Philly. My my daughter's coming to East Mount Philly. Are you talking about the twenty seventh? Yeah, Duncan can't do it. Um, honestly, I'm off only Mon only Tuesday and Wednesday. Really? Um, but companies are screwed, huh? Oh well, I choose when to use my PTO, oh. and I choose to use three days in a row and then I will use the rest of it elsewhere. Um so <clears throat> a Google Doc or something an invitation to the Google right. Did you get the high level questions? Um so I have increased the benefit of that is Okay yeah I gotta go home because I'm getting salary loss payments I'm gonna put in a twenty thousand dollar expense. Finish up highway and then meet with Rosemary to buy a stretch. Like everything. That's gonna give us a lot better idea on where things stand. There so was here, there was the comments on rec. Got yeah. the comments on library. I have a long list of rec. I have uh, <coughs> Casey because so she feels good if those numbers are right. And then I also have <coughs> library just to make sure it's at zero with the exception of salary and expenses. I did I did not they put their salary and benefit increases in. Do you want me to verify that that matches what you decided, or are you going to let them set their own salary for 
since I've been on the board, they've always respected what the select board has for their employees. Okay, I'll just confirm, and if not, I'll let you know. We don't want to double check your number, so yes, I have sometimes similar to what you the guests are going to be coming. A bigger, a bigger question um, is. I think we voted earlier, a couple to three months ago, to take the ARPA money and run it through the existing budget to offset expense, which means that the sheet that Rosemary handed out a while ago, yeah. um, we, we need to, we need, I guess, this is 2023 surplus on here. I'd like her to double check that and just make sure those numbers are good. Because we we should be using that when we're yeah, we should. looking at it. But the other the other thing that we kind of need to take into consideration is what our estimated surplus is going to be at the end of <coughs> the fiscal year that we're currently in. And it should be a lot. It should be a lot. Well, what if we get those FEMA expenses? Because if we spend three hundred thousand, well, it's got nothing to do with FEMA. This is ARPA. Yeah, yeah, and so I guess what I'm saying is if we do the library and the municipal building and those expenses happen in this fiscal year, <coughs> there's two-thirds of our ARPA money is gone. No, it's not. Because, you know, you... Better not be. Well, <laughs> yeah, well with the hopes Until we get, get reimbursement, it is gone. That's my point is, is, like, you know, lining up, making... That's what I guess my... Back to that cash flow timeline that I wanted to create, it's like... We have both, both those jobs are supposed to finish right around the end of the fiscal year, so we might have expenses within this year and not reimbursement in the next year. But we need to get to Duncan's point. We need to get the ARPA allocated yeah. into that yes. cash flow, and we need to get it allocated into our budget. Yeah, well, 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 well better have already been moved into the budget. I mean, it was for what we voted to do that. We we did. And, um, and fifty thousand of that goes to the broadband project. Yeah, forty six thousand five hundred of that <laughs> goes to the Mumley Mumley Engineering. And didn't we already give? And the we broadband? still well, and also we have the northern borders allocation, and we need to have that allocated in our budget so that we have the allocation, because Mumley is not the same as the northern borders. And, mm, oh, Northern Board is not coming out of our budget necessarily, though. We didn't say where that was coming from. We did. We we allocated that from ARPA. Yeah, that that was, I understand, but not but challenge. not from ARPA within our budget. We just yeah. said from ARPA. Right. Correct. We so yeah. I'm saying the, the 46 and the 50 come right off the top of yeah. the ARPA. Of the ARPA. So yeah. if you do that, I did, I did some quick <laughs> figures. If you do, we got 635, 560. If you take the fifty and the forty six five, it leaves five thirty nine. And then you oh, take 16. the northern borders out. Then you take if if we get the EDA and the northern borders, our obligation is three hundred and ninety six thousand four ninety five. <coughs> Only eighty percent of that can come from ARPA. Am I right about that, Beth? Mm. Or can all of it come from ARPA? Okay. It's not from ARPA anymore because we just put it into the general fund. It's just no, 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 surplus. no, no. It surplus. has to be. Oh, I see. It can only surplus. come from surplus. Okay. It's, no. it's, it's, okay. Wait, 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 wait. From ARPA, very specifically, part of that has to come not from our budget, not from our cash flow in our budget. It comes from ARPA, the funds ARPA. And if that's eighty percent, I don't remember. I don't remember honestly. I thought there was. But that's eighty. Okay, eighty percent right off the top. Okay, so what does that leave us? Well, so that that would the ARPA amount would be three seventeen one ninety six. Our share that we'd have to come up with would be seventy nine thousand two ninety nine. So that could. So once that, that went into our budget, though, that could come out of our budget. <clears throat> that's seventy nine because uh, yeah, those funds are allocated to our budget. Right. Yeah, right. But in the end, Duncan, you were coming up with a total number. Of so I think <coughs> out of out of the total six hundred and thirty five five sixteen uncommitted, I think we're going to have two hundred twenty one thousand eight hundred twenty dollars. And that of money left. includes the seventy nine. Surplus money left. And that includes the seventy nine. Or no? Uh, that does, does not, not include, include the 79. 79. So if we took the 79 out of it, we're talking 150. Yes. 
And we're also going to have some miscellaneous expenses that I don't think we budgeted for, just $25,000 in ag mitigation for the, for the site. Um, there's probably conservatively another fifteen or twenty thousand in engineering so we don't fees. Need to take that out. We or we would probably be taking out a surplus. Yeah. So we're looking right. at like a hundred. And, and then then, yeah. then we're gonna have probably <coughs> three hundred thousand at the municipal building, or you know, there's gonna between the municipal building and the library, we're gonna have say four hundred thousand dollars worth of expense. But that's different. That's cash flow. We're going to have forty thousand dollars that we're responsible from. That's not reimbursed by state or FEMA. Okay. And so, like so that hundred now drops down to sixty. You know, so just making sure that we're like. At the end, at the end of the day, though, I would, you know, this this is great. If it's a hundred or sixty or whatever it is, it'd be really nice to know what it is, what our regular surplus is. I mean, we generally run a surplus. It'd be really nice to have. That number somewhere, and it yeah. would be nice for me to know how much of it was of this surplus is actually due to our property. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard. We need to keep moving because I'm getting tired I'm and getting I'm going to get cranky. And I am. Mark's already cranky. He's already packed up, ready. Right? Um, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and I say that before I forget, we need somebody to go to that VLCT via um, not the cities and towns. The flood meeting that they are holding, we need to go to that because they have really good information there, and we can't miss it. Like somebody has Does to somebody go. From the select board have to go, or can Randall go, or Tom can go. Randall, Randall can go. Randall go. Yeah, I mean, the last time a whole bunch of people said they were going to go, and no one went except me. Is it? Can that be? A, it's fine. I know that you had an issue that day, but like you weren't the only one. So I just want to make sure are that. Are doing it as a Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing it as Zoom. You have to sign up through the league's website. That's one. That was the one from Katie Buckley that we got yesterday. That was the, that was the end cap, right? That the... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we need to make sure we go to all of those because the like the last time it was really good information. We have three executive sessions, so are we ready? Three. One other question. Go ahead. When do we expect some of this FEMA reimbursement to come in, and how will that affect our bottom lines? We don't know the timeline, and that's like I think. Um, but in the next fiscal year, if we're completing our process, we'll we'll be able to get some money for. There's different categories. There's A, B, C, and E. Yeah. I can believe. The A, which is like debris management, once we close, that stuff has already been in the process of being closed out. We just had a meeting last week. Yeah. And that stuff, we should be able to start seeing, that's going to tell us the timeline for reimbursement, whether it's three weeks or six months. But once we close that out and we get a check, then we'll know the timeline. We're ready to, almost ready to close out B, which is our highways, all those are repaired. It looks like everything's done. We need a couple more things. And then C is almost ready to get closed out as well. But a, as we close yeah, we out the motion. BIs, then we're going to be we'll start getting money. Mm -hmm. A lot. Of, there's some big expenses break. up front that we spent that break. we're going to get back. I know that that makes it hard to make a budget for next year. I mean, no idea where the money. Yeah, absolutely. It, it certainly does. <laughs> <coughs> I motion to enter into executive session for attorney client communications as allowed by one VSA three thirteen. I second that. A one F. All those in this. All those in favor. Uh, uh, uh -huh. So do we have to leave the room?